cooperation with the Russian Federation, or restoring the 1992 Constitution of Crimea status as part of Ukraine. There is no option to reject both possibilities and support remaining independent. Physically, an independent Crimea is roughly the size of Israel or Kuwait, but its population is much smaller, more in line with a nation like Latvia or Estonia. This is the first time Crimea has been independent since 1783, when it was annexed into the Russian Empire. It remained part of Russia and the Russian Soviet Republic during the Soviet era until 1954, when Ukrainian-born Nikita Khrushchev transferred it into the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. It remained part of Ukraine since, albeit one with a considerable degree of autonomy. Crimea's population is majority ethnic Russian, and it hosts the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Though a Russian unity party in Crimea's parliament has pushed for reaccession into Russia, the region's secessionist push didn't really get serious momentum until the recent regime change in Kiev, which ousted a pro-Russian government. Secretary of State John Kerry has also ruled out meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin until and unless Russia unilaterally agrees to all U.S. demands before the meeting. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Amagi Metals. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. Amagi Metals offers beautiful gold and silver rounds and ingots at great prices. Amagi Metals carries the 50-gram Cumbi Bar, a 50-gram gold bar comprised of 50 detachable 1-gram gold bars. They also have a 100-gram silver Cumbi Bar and much more. Amagi Metals also accepts Bitcoin, like Bitcoin and Dogecoin, allowing you to convert your cryptocurrencies into precious metals. Shop Amagi Metals online at gold.fppradio.com. That's gold.fppradio.com. Last Friday, the Washington State Senate passed a bill putting strict limitations on the use of drones and other extrasensory devices within the state by a vote of 46 to 1. The Washington State House concurred on Senate amendments by a vote of 77 to 21 yesterday after having passed the unamended version 83 to 15. The bill prohibits the use of drones to collect personal information that describes, locates, or indexes anything about a person without a warrant made in writing upon oath or affirmation to a judicial officer where there is probable cause. The legislation also bans public agencies from even acquiring drones without specific authorization from the appropriate governing body. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. $6 Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. They actually give priority to all Bitcoin orders. Go look at their shirts. They're witty, hip, smart, and liberty-oriented. Shop $6 Shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. That's 6.fppradio.com. Another U.S. drone strike in Yemen has killed four people, all of whom the Yemeni government immediately labeled al-Qaeda members. Yemeni officials routinely identify everyone the U.S. kills as al-Qaeda, but in many cases, it has later been revealed that the victims were innocent civilians hit by part of the policy of signature strikes. Under signature strikes, U.S. drone strikes don't need to target anyone specifically identified on the ground, but can target people who look like they would probably be guilty of something. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. According to a groundbreaking new study published Thursday in the New England Journal of Medicine, psychologists have discovered that the average person, while ostensibly appearing to be normal and mentally sound in their day-to-day -day lives, immediately becomes a deranged psychotic when alone at home. We observed hundreds of subjects with successful careers, numerous friends, and loving families perfectly normal. But as soon as they were at their homes by themselves, they began presenting behavior consistent with those suffering from dementia, schizophrenia, and various other acute mental illnesses. Researchers illustrated the study's findings with footage of 29-year-old test subject Brian Temple, who, despite having a steady job and maintaining an ordinary social life, exhibited increasingly erratic and unstable activity from the moment he was alone in his apartment, including dancing in his kitchen to no music whatsoever. He has come in. 
making grotesque faces in the mirror for extended periods of time, and seemingly having conversations with no one in particular. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we will take your calls about anything you want here toll-free. 855-450-FREE is the Pro XPN toll-free line. That's 855-450-3733. The we tonight includes me, Ian. And Brett. Brett is here courtesy of the School Sucks Project. And Brett, tonight you brought something to the table that I think a lot of people are going to be able to relate to. That is, if they went to a kind of a Prussian-based style school system. Yeah. A t- topic yeah. about homework. Absolutely. You want to lead off with that? Let's jump right in. Because into I think that. there's some there might be some uh, good practical value for obviously there's a lot of people in the audience who have to send their kids to public school. Or maybe they're still in school. We do have some younger listeners as oh, well. Yeah, and private school mm-hmm. and charter school. They all have agreed on this homework thing, that that's a good idea. It's and that's fairly the, ubiquitous. Uh, yeah, that's what the story is about tonight. Homework can turn your kid into a stressed out wreck researchers say Hmm. all right so that's not just me the host of some anti-school podcast saying that (laughs) researchers are saying it it's from reason.com the author is jd uh to sile i'm guessing i don't know how you pronounce that yeah i'm guessing on the pronunciation yeah to seal that sounds right sending your kid to school can be frustrating as hell Top-down mandates and the reality that your child is just one among a roomful can restrict your options, even when you're lucky enough to have options from which to pick. Despite the variety of public, private, and charter schools near me, all of the parents I know complain that their kids have too much damn homework. Now, when we complain to teachers and administrators, we'll be armed with research suggesting that professional educators are trying to turn our kids into socially stunted weirdos. Well, I don't think that's their intention, right? I mean, the edu- the educators, I think, genuinely want to help kids learn, and this is the way it's always been done, so load them up with homework. You know, it, that's that's an, actually an interesting uh, an interesting idea right there. That it all because I've said that on my show so many times. You know, educators they have the best of intentions. You know, I believe and, that, and they're kind of sucked into this. Uh, you know, they get into this. Uh, profession because they want to help kids. Mm. And I remember I said it to my mom one time. My mom was a teacher from like the early 70s until when I was born. She taught in an inner city school in uh, Pennsylvania outside mm-hmm. Philadelphia. And she said, it's not why I got into teaching. Really? She said, when I when I went to see the career counselor in high school, they said, you're a woman, so you can be a secretary, <laughs> a nurse, or a teacher. And that was, that was mm. you know, 1960, 1960s. So obviously that's not the case today sure. anymore but you have to think that over the course of the 20th century a lot of people were just kind of relegated to teaching because they were female and is that where homework came from well i i think that uh it, it just speaks to the not all uh teachers okay. enter the profession with oh i can't wait to make a difference uh for kids and uh, i remember when i was a, a young professional i was working in a private school a lot of people were urging uh, a lot of us uh, to go and work for the government. They said, go go get a government job. You know, the benefits are insane. And pay is better too, Yeah, right? and the pay, the pay is better. So it wasn't about making a difference. It was like, people know that it's uh, a well-paying, uh, you know, high-benefited job. And That's that true. attracts a lot of people too. Now, I think there are, I would still say that a majority of people go into school for good intentions, and they kind of become victims of the system, too, just like the kids do. But I've had to kind of back away, you know, hearing this anecdote from my mom and looking into it a little more after that from this idea that everybody is going there with the, with the best of intentions. I certainly under, uh, would agree that not everyone is. Mm-hmm. There's obviously some people who are seeking a sweet, cus- you know, sweet job with great bennies. Yeah. Um, or and or there are some who might. Uh, feel like they're not qualified for anything else. You know, those who can do, those who can't teach, the old saying. Yeah. So there are probably some who saw it as an easy career path, but most of them, when you ask them, in my experience, will say they wanted to help Oh, kids. boy. Yes, they they certainly yeah. will. And, and you know, they don't realize... Uh, I remember there was uh, some budget issues in New Hampshire a couple of years ago, and uh, we took some cameras up to Concord, Jason Talley and I, and a few other people, and we were shooting some footage, and I confronted 
uh, a, I think she was an elementary school teacher. And I felt so bad for her because she had no idea, you know, what was going on with the budget. She didn't, she didn't understand all that. None of that had ever been explained to them. Uh, a lot of the teachers had been made to feel like they were victims. And she's like, I have three kids. I have, you know, health insurance that I need to get. I don't know any other way that that would be possible. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're kind of sucked in and made into dependence. And I mean, you saw it. You attended meetings here recently here in Keene for school board and school budget related well, matters. Right. I mean, they become a political football, essentially, at that point. Not only are they dependent on yeah. the system, but they're also being used uh, by the people in that system. And some of them use the system. I mean, yeah. some of them do know what's going on and they're very interested in increasing the benefits and things like that. But yeah, I can see that others would who were just in the kind of the, the realm to teach then all of a sudden discover all these this political uh, play that is going around, uh, happening constantly around them, whether it's budgets or contracts and unions. And there's there's a lot of politics that, uh, that goes on there. And that's got to be, for some of them, it has to be distasteful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other thing, too, that I noticed from what just happened and other things I've seen in other places related to school politics is the perception of threat. Like, you went to these meetings with a relatively small relatively powerless dare i say compared to the teachers union yeah group of people 12 people and, versus about 90 and just even introducing the idea that school budgets could be lower mm-hmm. school boards could have less power you know more power could be in the hands of the people you know allegedly uh well, that not only, was not only that i introduced the idea that the teachers should run the schools I mean, that's that's what I'd like to see happen, ideally, because I think that when, you know, small government people come into these meetings, they're derided due to the idea that they want to cut the budgets. Well, look, how about this? How about you teachers could just run and own the school? We'll just give you the school. Just, yeah. just, just cede it to the teachers, all the property, the classrooms, the buses, everything, whatever school they're working for, whatever government school we're talking about, give it to the staff, not just to the teachers, the janitors, the administrators, give everybody an equal share in the operation and the ownership of the school and then set them free of the government system and let them sink or swim as the market may dictate. Then they would truly be rewarded based on their abilities and they would have full control over their curriculum. They wouldn't have any you know, state or federal control at that point that would be telling them what to do. And of course, I was told my idea was illegal and well, out of order. Well, that, that's an easy way to dismiss it because yeah. your idea is a threat. Because remember, you're talking about schools now, but those people that you're talking to about your idea, they were schooled too. Mm -hmm. And their schooling didn't prepare them for that kind of independence or control or responsibility. That's true. It prepared them to fit themselves into a pre-existing machine at some point where they're at probably an insignificant level. Uh, Somebody will tell them what to do. Somebody will tell them how to do it. Do your job. Yeah. And get a paycheck. And And then retire after 30 years or whatever. Yeah, that's most people. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean... Education, uh, and there's others. One, uh, other ones is too. Government work, police work, military work, psychiatry. These are obedient professions, and I think people overlook how much obedience there is. Mm. And um, it doesn't take many nefarious people or many, you know, plans that aren't great for the public at large to really screw things up because almost everybody participating in these systems or these institutions is very obedient and they don't ask a lot of questions of whoever is above them. I remember, uh, you know, I was, uh, worked in a boarding school that I, I found out they were into uh, all kinds of things that were uh, questionable as, as my time there went on. Uh, but when I was, you know, 21 or 22 and new at that job, it was, it was easy to just do what I was told. I didn't want to, um, you know, ask questions. I didn't want to rock the boat. Yeah, I figured, hey, if they're getting paid more than me and they're in a higher position and they've been here longer than me, that's three reasons why they know more than me mm. and I shouldn't question them. And that was certainly reinforced too, you know, and a lot of these types of institutions, private or public, not really encouraged to question the system. So The toll-free number here tonight, if you'd like to add to the discussion, 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. We'll continue. I'm sure there's a little bit because we kind of gone off on a tangent. Is there more about the homework thing? Oh, absolutely. Right, we'll get I into think, that. Yeah, we're, we're going to dig further into that. Also, we'll take your calls about anything. If you want, you may bring up whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live eight fifty five four fifty free. Skype us at username lrn dot fm. Plus, I've got some school since we're on the topic. I've got some school related stories. Yet another 
A uh, young teenage male is in trouble for having a knife in his car at school. And he's like a trained EMT as well. We're coming up. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. How dare you and who do you think you are? I mean, it's my life. It's my business. I should be able to run it how I want to, and my customers should be able to make the choice for themselves as to whether or not they want to do business with me. And they should be able to make that choice based on uh, the quality of my product or my reputation or the fact that I've got third-party certification or whatever factors they deem important. If I'm doing business and you don't trust me or you think I'm shady, then you don't have to do business with me. In fact, you can tell other people what you think about my business and my practices and Maybe they also will join you in not doing business with me. There's no need for government regulations out there. The marketplace can handle third-party certification of various different products and services to where people who are concerned about whether or not the business they're dealing with is trustworthy can check with a verifiable resource that, indeed, this is a trustworthy individual or a trustworthy company that you're doing business with. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want right here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Of course, you can join us online. You can create the content that you find there on the front page of the website. Everything that you see there has been placed there by listeners like you. You find something online that you think is interesting, outrageous, fun, exciting, whatever you uh, like. You can submit it 
right to the front page of freetalklive.com. It can then be voted upon by other Free Talk Live listeners, and then ultimately we will see and know what you think is interesting. So go and take a moment. You do need to have a Reddit account and a freetalklive.com account, and then you can link those two accounts together. It only takes you just a, a moment to do these things, and then you'll be good to go for submitting content and voting any old time at freetalklive.com. Now, also, coffee. Dot freetalklive.com. If you're a coffee drinker, we're looking for a thousand people like you to hook up with a free pound of the best of the best coffee from BuzzBox. You can go to coffee.freetalklive.com to get your free pound. You do have to pay for the shipping cost, but the pound itself will cost you nothing. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. This is great coffee, and there's a mission behind this company. What they're doing is, if they can get 1,000 Free Talk Live listeners to order coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com, they'll be able to finance 100 microloans through World Vision. They're helping change lives by allowing people around the world to buy into their co-op as well as providing other microloans that are helping people start their own businesses in other parts of the world. So you can help us out and help them out uh, by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. Get that free pound. You can cancel your subscription at any time. Again, you just pay shipping. You get a free pound of very high-quality coffee from BuzzBox at coffee.freetalklive.com. We're going to get deeper into the subject of homework and how bad of a thing it is. Sure. Uh, Brett, that's the story that you brought in tonight. But first, we've got Dennis on the line in New Hampshire. You can bring up what you want. Dennis, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Greetings, gentlemen. Hey there. So there were a couple of uh, very historic things that happened uh, in the New Hampshire House of Representatives today. I thought I'd share the happy news. Please. Um, So just today, in the House of Representatives, they voted by a veto-proof margin to end the death penalty in this state. Whoa. That's huge. I was very happy to say that, Chris. That doesn't make it a law now, but that's certainly, uh, you know, something like that happening by veto-proof margin in either chamber, particularly in the House, pretends very, very well for the repeal of that particular dastardly law. Well, now, the veto-proof, meaning that two-thirds? Yes. So two-thirds of the State House voted for this, and that sends a message, right? I mean, that, that, that sends the message up the chain to the governor's office and, to a lesser extent, the Senate— that sends the message that this is what people want, that people are sick of the death penalty. They want it to go away. And, and by the way, New Hampshire rarely uses its death penalty, so yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost a formality at, at this point. But the thing they do use it for is people who kill police officers, apparently. And uh, so apparently there's one guy who's sitting on death row in New Hampshire. And so why it is that police officers get special treatment over average people, I think, is another issue and and very, very wrong. I don't think they're any better than anyone else. So I'm glad to hear about that. And, And presumably that will put some level of political pressure on both the Senate and the governor to let this thing go through, right? It does. I mean, what it really means is that, you know, in, in the Senate, it's a lot more political than it is in the House. In the House, it's a lot more about people just kind of voting their conscience, really. But in the Senate, it's a lot more horse trading goes on. And what this means is that someone who really wants to kill this bill, someone who really wants to preserve the death penalty, is going to have to expend that much more political capital to get what they want, to where it makes it a lot less likely that they're going to bother expending it. I see. So it's a very good thing. Excellent. Um, also, no, wait, wait, one, one more question. Day. One more question about the uh, the two-thirds thing. Is it two-thirds of the total of the House? So there's 400 House members in uh, New Hampshire, or is it only two-thirds of those who vote? Of those who vote that day. Okay, because, yeah, a lot of times there's a bunch of people who aren't even there. Okay, very good. Uh, so the other thing that you wanted to share. Marijuana decriminalization also passed the same chamber, again, by a uh, veto-proof margin. Wow, also huge news. That So that had never happened before. Uh, actually, we, we, we've been passing through the House of Representatives decriminalization consistently now for years. But by slim, but usually um, the margins are slim, right? if I remember correctly, right, Dennis? It's one of these cases where every two years the bill comes up, and every two years it gains more and more people. It's one of these cases where you're just changing hearts and minds bit by bit. Mm-hmm. Um, to the point now where it's this lovely veto-proof margin pretty much every time through the House. And so, it has, so it has passed with a veto-proof margin previously? Yes. 
Okay. I, I believe I, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I'd have to check, but I know that it's been like an increasing every time thing. Where has it but bombed out? Really... I mean, has it been bombing in the Senate? Has it been failing there previously? Uh, either the Senate and or the governor. Mm-hmm. And typically, it's one of these cases where the governor says, "Don't let this hit my desk. I don't even want to. I don't want to see this." And then the Senate tries to scupper it before it gets to the governor's desk. Do you think right. it's going to be different this time? I do. Um, partially because of the composition. Um, you know, there are, frankly, there are more Democrats, and this tends to be more of a Democrat thing. Isn't um, it a Republican who wrote the bill? Here's the greatest thing. Uh, one of the people who spoke in favor of the bill was the leader of the House Republican Alliance, mm-hmm. a guy named Representative Baldessero. And this guy, the, the first time I ever ran into this guy, was uh, at a Liberty Forum event where they were taking people up to the state house to like have them you know tour the state house and he was one of the reps that was touring and you know taking people around. He's an ex-marine. He's the most sort of gung ho marine USA kind of guy that you can that you can imagine, right? Mm-hmm. And the first time he's up there, and the libertarians, you know, us, uh, the free and libertarians and liberty forum goers are are asking him about you know marijuana. Uh, decriminalization because, you know, New Hampshire is supposed to be all live free or die or whatever. And he was just right away like, no, uh. no, that's, un- you know, out of the question, unthinkable, don't even talk to me about that S word. <laughs> that is just, you know, that's not responsible. Boom, 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 boom. And here we are, five years later, this guy is in front of the House wow. speaking in favor of decriminalizing. So that's a huge that success hearts story. And minds, one by one, hearts and minds, one by one over a long period of time where they hear the message from people who they think are reasonable, who are making sense, even if they start off completely opposed. It's that wearing, it's that libertarian message that you guys give on Free Talk all the time. Mm-hmm. And we wear them down just over and over with logic. It, it works. I mean, it works here in New Hampshire because these people, you can actually talk to them. I mean, as you pointed out, this guy was at the uh, Liberty Forum State House tour this year. He was at the Liberty Forum. I saw him walking around. I didn't see you, Dennis, but I saw him walking around and talking with people. And there were several state reps that were attending the Liberty Forum this year. Liberty Forum being the yearly event that the Free State Project puts on to kind of show off some of the successes of uh, New Hampshire and bring people together. Um, but you know, it there's constantly Free State Project participants and Liberty lovers in the State House who are speaking to these panels and these committees. In fact, usually, if and I'm there almost, I've been there almost every week up until just recently when there haven't been uh, very many like times where we can go and speak. But of, when they were doing the hearings where we could talk, I've been there every week. And usually you go in and you go into one of these hearings and it's free staters and bureaucrats. And those are the two perspectives that are being shared with these uh, these committees. Dennis, can you hang on to continue the discussion here in a moment? I got a question. All right, stand by. More with Dennis Goddard here. He's uh, with the Free State Project. More on the way. This is Free Talk Live. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Did you know that organic sulfur can cleanse and defend your body against the poisons we're exposed to each day? Organic sulfur crystals from sulfurdefense.com help by forcing oxygen and nutrition into your cells while eliminating heavy metals, contaminants, and damaging radiation. Defend yourself and family from toxic assault with one of the most critical and essential minerals available today. Order online at sulfurdefense.com. That's sulfurdefense.com. Or call 800-593-6273. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, well, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. And, of course, 
OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you see, to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Calling all makeup lovers. Bare Minerals Foundation just won its ninth Glammy Award for Best Prestige Foundation. And to celebrate, we're offering risk-free trials to all women nationwide. That's right. Every woman who calls right now can get a full-size risk-free trial of our number one selling foundation. Plus, a free five-piece makeup set. For yours, call 1-800-961-4764. This is an exclusive radio-only offer you don't want to miss. Bare Minerals Foundation gives you flawlessly beautiful coverage with a no-makeup feel. And it's clinically proven to promote clearer, healthier-looking skin for all skin types. No wonder it's won nine Glammys in a row. And now you can try it for yourself. Call now to find out how you can participate in our nationwide risk-free trial and join the millions who've already tried Bare Minerals Foundation and fallen in love with their skin again. Plus, we'll send you a free five-piece makeup set, our gift to you. Hurry, don't miss this exclusive radio-only offer. 1-800-961-4764. 1-800-961-4764. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like right here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Still to come here, we've got to talk about the subject that Brent brought up at the beginning of the show. Homework and a study that has been done that shows that it can be really detrimental. Yes. To your children. Uh, So we can get into that, and also your calls come first. So we're going to go back to your phone calls here at 855-450-FREE. want to remind you about the Free State Project. Uh, It is your best chance at achieving liberty in your lifetime, to get together with other people who think like you, because you can actually have an impact, uh, as we were talking about with Dennis Goddard, who's one of the earlier movers for the Free State Project. Uh, I am also an early mover. Brett, I guess technically you're an early mover, even though you were born here. Technically, originally. yeah. Well, you moved I, back. I moved here very early in 1980. Yes. And grew up here and then moved away and then joined the FSP and moved back. So uh, a lot of people are coming here. Over 1,500 are already here in New Hampshire. These are people who understand what freedom means, that in order to be free, you have to allow others to be free, and that you should be free to live your life how you want so long as you don't harm anyone else. And we're starting to see some real uh, wins in the the state house. People are getting elected. They're having an impact on the system. And also outside of the system, they're having an impact through things like civil disobedience, non-cooperation, creating media that's changing hearts and minds. There's just so much to do. It's a big project, and we're looking to have 20,000 people move here. Again, over 1,500 are already here, and the official move hasn't even begun. The move doesn't begin until we reach 20,000 people who have pledged to make the move here to New Hampshire. Over 15,500 have made that pledge, so we're well on the way, over 75% of the way there. So you can join us and join the fun over at freestateproject.org. That's freestateproject.org. Now, Dennis, uh, I know Brett had a question for you, but I want to, um, I guess, get one more thing out here. You'd called in to let us know the good news out of the State House. Apparently today they voted overwhelmingly by a veto-proof margin for decriminalization of cannabis, as well as ending the death penalty. Now, those are two issues that are very important to liberty-minded people. 
This is a major success story, and I'm glad that you called to share that with us. But it's not all good news today, is it, Dennis? I saw uh, somebody post on Facebook, Jay Freeville posted, that apparently they also voted to raise the minimum wage to $9 an hour. Yeah, it's, it's always a double-edged sword when you get uh, one political party or the other, and uh, this is one of them. I, my, my guess is that raising the minimum wage is not going to actually pass, but that's just a guess. It's one of those things that it could happen. Um, but it's one of these cases where it's largely symbolic anyways. The minimum wage uh, in the state of New Hampshire is, is already defined, and it's far below the federal minimum wage. So I believe what the bill does is raise it up to the federal minimum wage. So the net effect is no actual impact on the economy, though I still don't like the bill. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not perfect. Uh, politics is a messy process. But I think what you've described earlier is it shows that people's minds, at least the politicians' minds in New Hampshire, can be changed. You talked about uh, a particular politician, Al Bar- Baldessaro, who five years ago was vehemently against decriminalizing cannabis. And now uh, you said he was speaking in front of the state house for decriminalization of cannabis, just as an example of the kind of the political evolution of one of the uh, the creatures of the state house, and there are four hundred of them. It's an interesting process. Brett, you had a question for Dennis Goddard. Yeah, when we were talking about that in the last segment, uh, Dennis used a, a couple of uh, phrases. One was winning hearts and minds, and one. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis, but I I felt like you said something like wearing people down with logic. And yeah. Yeah, my question for you, I figured you'd be a really good resource for this question, and maybe it will help me better understand something that I, I talk about a lot very negatively on, on my show. Uh, Ian was saying during the break that obviously, you know, Keen and Concord used to butt heads a lot more on the, the politics issue, and Ian said that you were very persuasive for him. Uh, one of the things that I've said to my audience many times is that politics is not a good place to introduce these new ideas to people, because from my experience, just in conversation and observation, it seems like people go to politics to be angry and to wish bad things upon their enemies, and um, it, it seems like a tough arena to introduce new ideas. So, uh, you've been very, very persistent uh, for a long time. I mean, we met each other back in, in 2010, and I know you were involved uh, back then. So I, I was wondering if you could speak to your ability or your successes with actually building relationships that, that contribute to a success story like the one, what was this rep's name? Al Baldessaro. Al Baldessaro. Um, do you find that you're able to build relationships with people in this in this arena that leads to them changing over time? You use this word politics like it means something. Um, th- there are so many meanings to that word and so many contexts in which it could be applied. I think if you're going door to door trying to talk about a candidate or you're at some kind of a political sine wave, no, there's no conversation there really. There's no that's not a place to introduce a concept. Um, and even when a politician tries to introduce a, a new idea in, like, a debate or something, if you see, say, Ron Paul talking about non-intervention in, 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 a, in a Republican debate, that also really only speaks to the people that already agree. It, it might pull a few people in, um, but it's, it's not the place to go. Where we've had a great deal of success, um, it's kind of like Ian was mentioning, the, uh, the state house with the hearings. When the hearings are done in the state of New Hampshire, you know, every bill gets a hearing, a public hearing, and any member of the public can show up and speak at the public hearing, and the only requirement is that you be able to walk up and say what your name is. That's pretty much the requirement. Yeah. Um, and it's at that point that if you're able to speak very carefully, very clearly, very quickly, very concisely, not bore people to death, which is the biggest problem, and not infuriate people – and come off as credible, responsible, and someone that could be agreed with, even if you maybe don't agree with their philosophy. If you can agree with someone on just this one little issue, and if that happens repeatedly, and they start to get to know, oh, there's that guy. I mean, that, that was, you know, I, I started doing this, uh, God, it felt so ridiculously awkward. I mean, I, I, I should be at work, or I should be doing something else, but I'm here in this room, and I, is it okay for me to be here? Um, but if you spend time there and you become sort of just a known quantity and they know who you are and you're speaking intelligently and giving them information as opposed to just opinions, what's great is if you can give 
the representatives, because very often if it's a bill, it's not one of these huge bills like, you know, marijuana decriminalization or, you know, life or death issues, but if it's a fairly small bill that they just really don't know which way to go and they just want information. If you can be a reliable source of useful information as opposed to, well, I think this or I think that, that doesn't really, that's not that useful. I mean, it's nice. It's good to know what the public thinks, but, you know. Um, so you, just let me just of, uh, in, uh, ask this. You you think, generally speaking, and this this is a big generalization, that these people value information over like allegiance to the party or the or the voting line of a party it depends it depends on the issue like i say a, a, the way to really start is not to start on one of the issues that is deeply emotional that people have deep personal identification with i mean you, you know you're you're basically libertarian or you're anarchist or whatever if someone has an opinion that marijuana um you know should be uh, criminalized and is a scourge on the earth that must be stopped at, at the expense of our liberties. Um, a person who has that kind of a of an idea that is radically different from yours, you're going to push away on them. You're going to turn them off immediately. If the first interactions you have with them is they're just giving you information about some other issue that's not deeply emotional that you don't deeply identify with, then when they come along and talk to you about you know whatever it is, the evils of marijuana, whatever, you just put yourself in the opposite person's shoes it's a lot easier for you to internalize and be receptive to their message. And I guess the point I'm getting at is it is a matter of wearing down over time, but it's also a matter of being uh, responsible and not just spouting off your libertarian opinion and assuming that because you're correct that everyone else will see the value. It's just with, with logic, with examples, with showing things from history, and yes, giving the philosophical and moral arguments as well. Um, time, not letting any one issue or any one meeting or any one vote be your crusade, the, the hill that you're going to die on, just knowing that you're going to be here tomorrow and you're going to be here next year, and people's minds do change. All right. Well, I, I appreciate the information. It's something that I'm trying to be more open-minded about. Uh, so thanks, Dennis. Dennis, thanks for the update. Great news. Uh, New Hampshire House voting overwhelmingly to end the death penalty and decriminalize cannabis. Thanks for the update tonight uh, from State House. More on the way. This is Free Talk Live. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. Hey, everyone. Have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional, quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey, gals. I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors, so it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card, and you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call one 800 9 That's 800-953-6062. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. 
FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on earth? Most coffee at grocery stores and chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to take control of the airwaves right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online just go to freetalklive.com, get interactive on the site. Lots of different ways to do that. We've got a webcam, for instance, which is tied into the same page as our chat room. So you can go watch and listen to the show, as well as interact with other Free Talk Live listeners all at the same time, all for free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You know, I talked about how Free Talk Live is uh, kind of a, a social bookmarking site, meaning that you can submit content to Free Talk Live and then vote it up or down. Another great site to get liberty oriented news is freedomsphoenix.com. You can go there, and that's a kind of a different site. They've got an editor who approves a bunch of different interesting stories and editorials and opinion pieces, and they've been doing it for a long time over there. Uh, go to freedomsphoenix.com. You can sign up for their daily dispatch to keep up to date with all kinds of great liberty-oriented news. That's freedomsphoenix.com. They're uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies at freedomsphoenix.com. We're going to continue here. Brett is here from School Sucks Project. Hey. SchoolSucksProject.com is the website. It is a radio show, podcast, YouTube, forum. Lots of uh, community there. You've got a pretty decent community of uh, yeah. listeners there. Yeah. I just started one of these Facebook groups. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's is, a great idea. And is it something where uh, anybody who's a fan of the show can join? Uh, yeah, it's an open group right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I it's 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 at a good size. Like a lot of diehard people, a lot of people I invited. Um, you know, maybe around three hundred, and nice. we'll see where it goes from there. I mean, we have a fan page that has like you know six thousand something people on it. But and is the group linked to from schoolsucksproject dot com? Uh, yes, yes. But uh, or if, if people you search for school, school sucks, sucks project, project on Facebook, you can find the the group. And uh, if you have something to say about the show or the issue of education or the opposite, which is school, uh, that's mm -hmm. a good place to do it because I know you guys have to deal with a lot of school horror stories on this show. Sure. We don't do that too much on my show anymore. We used to do it a lot back in the day, but if people have stuff they want to share, that would be a good place to do it. Awesome. Very cool. SchoolSucksProject.com. We're going to go to the phones, and then we'll talk more about the homework issue yeah. here in a moment. But first, we go to Jason in Colorado Springs. You're on Free Talk Live. Jason. Hi, Ian. Hey. Hi, Brett. Hi, Jason. What's on your mind tonight? I want to know what uh, Brett thinks, and also Ian, is the best strategy to privatize the public schools. Uh, I already agree that the homework is too much, so I don't want to talk about that. But what is the best, best strategy to privatize public schools? 
into that, the free market. And that's an interesting question. You mean from their existing form, using using yeah. the same buildings and the same personnel, but doing what Ian talked about earlier, turning control over to the teachers themselves? Well, I, I wouldn't use the term privatize, personally, because— Dirty when, word when, these days. Well, when you use the term privatize, it evokes— certain uh, pre you know preconception yeah. or preconceived notions like for instance when you talk about privatization it usually means that some company is brought in some sort of politically favorable company who's buddy buddy with enough politicians to make it their gig they come in they take over operation of whatever government service or product that we're talking about mm -hmm. and then in a lot of cases proceed to ruin it uh, yeah. or you know screw it up and that way people can go can point that point at that and say see you guys, this privatization stuff doesn't work. Uh, so I would I would keep away from that terminology. And if you're going to use anything, I think marketize might be a little bit better. But even then, that probably still has baggage attached to it. I would just, just stick to describing what the plan is. And I don't necessarily think Jason was going to propose what I was. In fact, he was just asking, I think, a question. But what do you think, Jason? Yeah, uh, well, I, I see it as, you know, you, there's a couple different, uh, I guess, methods. You could, de you could devote to... Uh, Defeat all school bonds. You could try to abolish the property tax, or you could try to take over the school board, or some combination thereof. Well, I think all of those actions to me sound uh, a little bit forceful, and this goes back to the political conversation we were having in the in the previous segment. Um, I, I think in, in, to see significant change in in anything, you have to be able to win people over, and I think that's going to be. A slow and gradual process, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't see myself as fighting the state or fighting public school or fighting the Federal Reserve. I think all those institutions are entirely unsustainable, and they'll, and they'll take care of themselves. You know, I'm just trying to do what I think a lot of people are trying to do is to show people what liberty looks like. And there's some people who, you know, come here or wherever they are, and they participate in counter economics. Um, I talk about what I think real education is, and hopefully that will attract the people who uh, want to learn more about real education and do it for themselves. I really don't care much what happens with, with the public schools. I, I hope that's not too much of a cop-out answer. But well, I, I think it kind of is a cop-out okay, answer okay. because, uh, okay, look, I support what you're talking about. Yeah. So I support talking about... You know, doing your own education at home, unschooling, homeschooling, alternatives to whatever the system is providing. I mm -hmm. support all that. I support persuading people to remove their children from government schools and go with some sort of alternative. I think those, all those things are fine things to do. But even though, for instance, here in Keene, New Hampshire, there's a fairly large school system with approximately $63 million budget. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money for a town of 25,000 people Yeah, uh, with you know some of the people from outside of Keene. So probably it's more like 50,000 or something that may possibly be dealing with the school system. But it's still a, a fairly large amount of people. They spend around fourteen or $15,000 per pupil, which is ridiculous amount of money. I mean, I, I come from Florida where they were spending $7,000 uh, per pupil. Yeah, most private schools were probably about half that per pupil, too. Uh, the private schools have a large range, but yeah, 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 yeah private yeah. schools I'm, can definitely do it for less. They yeah. can definitely do it for less. So, uh, so okay, so let's say you're successful with getting people to, to pull their kids out of the government school. Those are individual success stories, right? You're helping people. That's good for those kids. I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But the government school system, they're actually admitting that their enrollments are down. Yeah, There are fewer people coming into the government school system, but yet the budgets continue to go up. So while you're right, Brent, that it is unsustainable for the future, I mean, the, the taxes here in Keene are ridiculous. I mean, it's the highest tax rate of all of the towns and cities in New Hampshire, as I understand it, yeah. if not one of the top two. Uh, it's up there. And they're not. It's not getting smaller. And the taxpayers, you know, they just keep shelling out. They don't know what to do about it because the uh, the kind of the teachers' union and the people that work for the schools they run the game. They come into uh, all the political kind of arenas that they can, like this uh, deliberative session that you referenced earlier, where we had about a dozen Liberty people show up. Mm -hmm. We were significantly outnumbered by the teachers who were there, and then they numbered in the 90s. So. These people continue to vote for a larger system, and that uh, those votes get passed on to all the tax-paying people. And unfortunately, we're not to the point where people who pay property taxes are ready to have a 
revolt. I mean, they're just no, not. No, no. But they're it, not willing to put their house on the line, and most people can't because they're under a mortgage, and the mortgage demands that they pay all the taxes and follow all the laws. So how is how is that going to change? How is withdrawing people from the school system going to end the school system? There's, well, one thing doesn't seem to be right, connected yeah, to the other. Well, I know it's it's a cynical answer, but it's going to get darker before the dawn. You know, and and <laughs> in in the uh, and and that's a fact. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a lot of scary scenarios to contemplate, but I think what will probably happen in Keene, just, for, I mean, this is just, I'm just extrapolating from the observations of watching, you know, about an hour of the footage of this school board meeting that took place a, a few weeks ago. Um, they are going to continue, the government has one tool, right? The use of force, mm -hmm. essentially. I mean, they have, that's their main tool. Maybe they have a couple uh, auxiliary tools that go along with that, but government uses force. Um, so when there's a problem, it's like, well, how can we raise taxes? How can we use more force to get more of what we need? The, the problem with the schools generally is like, oh, this doesn't work. How can we do it uh, more of it more forcefully? Mm -hmm. So taxes in Keene, you know, are going up. That's that's yeah. my prediction for the years out. to come. And it's driving it's people driving out. It's driving families away. And it's I, driving the people that we need in Keene away from here. And what I think is ultimately going to happen if that doesn't change, and I I don't know how it changes, you're going to have a Detroitification yeah. of of a lot well, of these. Well, look, Detroit's still got a pretty large government. I mean, there's a lot of people that have left Detroit, but their government's still going. I mean, they're, they're, they're still there, and they're still taxing people. Sure, there's people who've abandoned their homes, and they can't get tax money out of those homes anymore. So they're, certainly their tax revenues are down, I'm sure, over the years. But the government's still going strong. The unions are still there, and they're still pushing to have the state exist. It's not like you know the loss of hundreds of thousands of people has actually destroyed the state in any way, shape, or form. But what's happening in places like Detroit in the Midwest is government— who clearly, you know, I mean, this is still going to take some time, I think, but government is appearing to be a lot more like a gang, mm -hmm. you know, than in a place where everything is functioning uh, better. You know, like, say, in New sure, Hampshire. but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to get the uh, to have teachers appear as though they're a gang. Well, I'm just I mean, saying that that's don't... how people lose lose faith yeah. in government by seeing it for what it really is. And yeah, that requires some darkness before before the light. I think. So, I mean, I see this. I see this as a very long, long process. Sure, sure. And pol politics is a long process, yeah. but I don't think it should be ignored. I mean, again, we're only talking about a hundred people that went to this uh, this deliberative session. All right. it would take would be a hundred Liberty people to show up in Keene and get active inside the system, and you'd have a huge impact. So, Jason, the the best answer from my perspective is to move to New Hampshire. More coming up. Right now until March 18th, the flooring experts at Lumber Liquidators have huge deals going fit any taste or budget, like donor oak laminate for an amazing 39 cents a square foot, beautiful carbonized bamboo for just $139, even spectacular Bellawood pre-finished Bolivian rosewood for an incredible $2.99 a square foot. Pick up free samples at hundreds of stores nationwide, plus special financing available and easy professional installation or expert advice for DIYers. But hurry, this sale ends March 18th. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, March 12, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,362. Silver opened at $20.94, while Bitcoin is trading at $635.51. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or give them a call 512-459-5253. Support also comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem. Online at sovereignbtc.com. In the news, Wednesday morning, two congressmen will hold a press conference in support of a resolution that would force the Obama administration to release 28 pages of a classified report on the attacks of September 11th 2001. Representatives Walter B. Jones and Stephen Lynch will speak about House Resolution 428, a bipartisan measure that seeks to declassify the joint inquiry into intelligence activities before and after the terrorist attacks of September 2001. Former NSA contractor Edward Snowden is taking the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee to task for hypocrisy. Snowden released a statement to NBC News Tuesday hours after Senator Dianne Feinstein lashed out at the CIA for allegedly spying on congressional committee members. Feinstein Tuesday morning addressed the matter on the floor of Congress, calling the alleged monitoring of committee member staffers a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Snowden's statement says it's concerning that an elected official doesn't care about the rights of ordinary citizens when spied on, but creates a scandal when learning the same thing is happening to them. On Tuesday, a historic lawsuit was filed by a 34-year-old Yemeni citizen currently being held in Guantanamo Bay Military Prison in Cuba. Imad Abdullah Hassan accuses the staff of force-feeding detainees up to a gallon of water and nutrients at a time. Other detainees have reported that the force-feeding sessions have been sped up and condensed to 20 minutes. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. Dorothy can walk you through the ins and outs of buying a home. Give her a call, 512-343-6494, or apply online at calldorothy.com, NMLS 216624. Support also comes from My Magic Mud, available at Brave New Books or online at mymagicmud.com. And from Brave New Books, online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, March 12, 2014, Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Sunday evening, the Bitcoin exchange Mt. Gox filed for bankruptcy in Dallas, Texas. This latest petition is being brought under Chapter 15 of U.S. Bankruptcy Law, which allows foreign companies an opportunity to reorganize their funds. In late February, Mt. Gox filed for bankruptcy in Japan after admitting to losing Bitcoin valued at over $450 million. The U.S. bankruptcy filing is also an effort to delay a federal lawsuit filed in Illinois on behalf of U.S. residents who lost money in Mt. Gox's collapse. An executive order is expected to be issued Thursday as President Obama looks to force businesses to pay more overtime to workers exempted in the past. USA Today reports the order to the Labor Department would restrict the ability of businesses to declare certain employees as executive or professional in order to avoid overtime payment. Strong pushback is expected from the business community. The New York Times reports the changes will be subject to public comment prior to final approval. That means it's possible the president will be forced to scale back his proposal. Ohio authorities on Monday put a halt to a fracking operation after two earthquakes occurred. Russia Today reports the precaution was taken despite authorities and an operator of the project saying there's no evidence linking fracking with the tremors. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal Printing, your source for anything printed since 1972. Now accepting Bitcoin, online at massappealinc.com. And support comes from growyourowngroceries.org, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, March 12, 2014.
2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. I recently signed up for one of these self-defense classes and brought along a camera crew to watch. Take a good look at this class instructor. Thank you very much. Boy, was he smooth. He tried to butter us up with flowery compliments like, good work, nice try. Yeah. Yeah. But don't worry, folks, I wasn't letting my guard down for one yeah. second. Maybe he wasn't planning to attack me at all, but he could potentially plan to attack me at some point, and that left only one option. Take him out first. This is, him. This is the guy. My quarry approached, and when the moment was right, I struck. Oh! I knew he'd be able to counter my every move if I just did what he had taught me, so instead, I did exactly the opposite. I beat him with a baseball bat. I am Shelby Cross! Do not ever attack me! Now, folks, I acknowledge that this man may have never been a threat, but a potential threat is just as dangerous as a real one. I don't play games with my life, and neither should you, and that's it. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. Uh, still to come, more about homework. We just scratched the surface of the topic at the beginning of the last hour. We've been taking your phone calls since then. Of course, you can call in about anything that you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. I'm Ian. And I'm Brett. Uh, let's go back to the phones here, Brett. We've got Jason. He's still with us in Colorado. He hung through the break, I guess, so there's a little bit more. His question was about you know, what can be done to end this oppressive, awful government education system. And Jason, you hung through the news there. Wanted to bring you back on. So, what uh, what else did you have to share? Did we answer your question appropriately earlier? Yeah. Well, I, I just wanted to know what you thought about the, the methods that were available and, and how to organize. Because I, I completely agree that over time it's all going to implode on itself. But uh, for those of us that are a little more impatient than that, what is the best method to hasten the day that the uh, the schools don't get funded? Yeah, because in the meantime, you keep you have to pay for it. So me so me and my 200-year plan <laughs> might be nice, but it's not helping you in the short term. Is that am I is yeah, that accurate? Yeah, like, like 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 the motto of the show, I want liberty in my lifetime. So uh how do I get there? What 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 do you think is the best way to do it? Sheer numbers. I mean, it's it's going to it's going to be a numbers game any way you shake it down. Brett's approach is a numbers game. My approach is I mean, my approach is all of those approaches. I'll do anything that I feel like can make a difference. So, if I had children, I would not put them in the government schools. I think that's one of the most important things that you can do and and share that philosophy and these ideas with other parents and try to encourage them to do the right thing and get their kids out of the government schools and and that I think is uh, you know, and of course the the more people that pull out of the government schools, the more difficult it will be for them to make the argument that they need to increase budgets every year. I mean, they look bad in Keene when they are admitting on one hand that that enrollments are down uh, across the board, and then on the other hand, demand budget increases. It it it's a, that's a hard argument to to make in front of the voters. It's so funny too. I just want to I just want to say this that in 2010. At the New Hampshire Liberty Forum, I had a conversation about this very subject with a group of activists. And the question, the specific question was, how many people from one school district would we need to convince to withdraw their children and homeschool in order for the school not to be able to justify uh, its budgets anymore? And, you know, I felt bad at the time because I was so cynical and I threw up my hands and said, they'd still find a way to do it. They'd say they need more money because people are leaving the schools and they need the more they need more money to to uh, make the schools better because that's why people are leaving. Yeah, but they would do that. Yep. That came true in Keene <laughs> this year. So it's it's very, very frustrating. Like I said uh, in, an, in an earlier segment, they only have one tool and it's to force people to pay them more and more and more until that becomes unsustainable. But if you could find 100 students that had parents that were willing to pull them out of the school system, you'd also have enough parents to go to any school board uh, meeting and take over the meeting. 
So, I mean, again, both approaches that we're talking about here, sort of the outside the system and the inside the system approach, they both rely on numbers of people coming to these ideas and being willing to actually take steps towards achieving more freedom. Uh, That's true. And we can only think about it on a small scale. Like, so, so maybe I was a little intimidated by your question at first because I don't like to think like a central planner. I think that's a very dangerous way of thinking. But if we're talking about like a district by district, local level kind of approach, I have to agree with Ian and Daryl and Conan and the other people here in New Hampshire who participated in this effort that if there was a hundred more people in that meeting sympathetic with uh, you know the idea of taking power away from the school board and lowering the budget, it would have been a dramatically different outcome. And and what does that mean? What would the recourse of the teachers of the of the city government be in that case? I don't know. Would they think of something forceful? They'd probably try to sue or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would do something forceful. In this case, our guys filed a suit because yeah. they uh, they went into this meeting and they arguably illegally changed the petitions that what had happened was one of the activists in the area, Conan, who yeah. was on the show Friday night yeah. uh, for the first time, by the way, and I thought he did well. Uh, but anyway, he was on with us. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, he, yeah. He, first, first time behind the mics yeah. here on Free Talk Live. Um, he was the guy who wrote up these uh, warrant articles, and he got 25 people to sign them, then submitted them to uh, the school board. And then at the school board meeting where the 100 people were at that yeah. I was telling you about, they gutted those warrant articles, and they completely made them null, essentially. They, they changed the wording to basically completely nullify those articles. And the argument that Daryl and Conan are making in their lawsuit, uh, there's four activists who filed a lawsuit against the school board, is that this was illegal. And so I don't like the idea of feeding money into the system personally, but in this case, I did donate to the the, the filing fee for this lawsuit. Yeah. Just yeah. because I, I thought it would be interesting to see what would happen. And secondly, I knew we'd get news coverage for it. So uh, we've gotten two front page news articles about this in the local newspaper. And for me, I spent a hundred bucks, uh, which I was the largest donator to this particular lawsuit. I spent a hundred bucks donating towards that. Fifty bucks for a front page news article? I'll take that. That's uh, that's an expensive piece of real estate. You want to try putting an advertisement on a front page of a newspaper? It can't be done. Spend a lot more than uh, than fifty dollars. So, Jason, to me, it's all about numbers. If you don't have numbers, you can't have success either in non cooperation or in civil disobedience or in politics. So, I would say uh, New Hampshire's Free State Project really has the best chance. I don't know if you're familiar with the Bedford situation, Jason. Have you been following what's going on here at all? Uh, no, no, I haven't. So, Bedford, New Hampshire. Uh, it's a town, kind of like a bedroom community just outside of Manchester. They had a school board election yesterday, as they did here in Keene. I was running for school board here in Keene. I got just over 5% of the vote. I actually didn't get last place. I beat the last place guy by about 50 votes, so I'm happy about that. I lost, but uh, but anyway, the guys over in Bedford, free staters, two free staters ran for the first time ever in Bedford. One ran for town council, another ran for school board. The political establishment freaked out about these guys. They attacked them on uh, cable access television. They attacked them in an email that went out to you know thousands of email recipients from s- s- the Teachers Association or something like that. And they were attacked uh, in a flyer, a full-color, two-sided flyer, full page, that was mailed to every household in Bedford at a cost of thousands upon thousands of dollars for printing and mailing. And this flyer was an attack flyer. It was a hit piece against these two guys saying, vote for anyone but the free staters. Now, they lost, but they did get 20 to 24 percent of the vote uh, in this election their first time out. So, I mean, that was a pretty good election result. And to, to watch the people who are in support of the state just basically flip their lids and spend all this money to try to put a stop to these two newbies, basically, it was wonderful. Whether we're talking about Keene or Bedford, and I and I said this before, but I'll say it again, even these people who are opposing your efforts here in Keene or Aaron Day's efforts in Bedford, New Hampshire, uh, they know that you're pretty powerless compared to them. But the perception of threat just from these new ideas oh, yeah. is very, very interesting. And what does it say about how they feel about their ideas, you know? Have you ever argued with a Republican about George Bush? You have. The man sitting across the table from me has. You ever argued with a liberal about Barack Obama? They know they're wrong. 
They mm. know that something doesn't add up, right? They got to stick with the party, though. It's a religion. And I don't say that in a way, and I know that sounds demeaning to religion. I don't mean it that way. What I mean is it's that people religion. pretend that it's logical when it is entirely faith based in both cases. And um, and when you confront people on this, they get very angry. So there is like this devil that appears on my shoulder when I think about 100 activists showing up to a keen school board meeting like, ha ha, I can't wait to see the look on their faces, you know, <laughs> like all these teachers. And I don't like to think that way because that doesn't, you know, that doesn't make good things happen in my head. And I think that contributes like being angry and resenting other people adds up to me being less free. No, I agree. Right you shouldn't now. be angry. If you're right. if you're angry about activism, then you're not doing it right. right. I think you need to be having fun. If you're not having fun, you're I, doing it wrong. I'm not, let me ask a, a parting question before the break. Okay, go. Is, it, is there a larger audience for the repeal of the property tax than just the school issue? Because we know the property taxes fund schools. Well, I think They're everybody hates attack. property taxes. They just don't know what to. They don't know what you would do without them, right? Like, who would take care of the roads? Right. All those big questions right. come up. Jason, yeah, thanks for your call tonight, question. man. I appreciate exactly. it. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live at eight fifty five four fifty three. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next ten minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor Starter Kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. A Japanese-American internment facility was still in operation in the mountains of Northern California. The facility should have been closed in 1945 and its 6,000 residents released, but unfortunately the camp was overlooked until this week. I am happy to announce, however, that the remaining 118 de detainees have now been fully exonerated of suspicion of spying for General Tojo, and they have been freed. Next item of business. The president will be meeting with the Australian Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd. Yes, Denise? This is a huge oversight. How could this have happened? Well, Denise, it looks like the camp just somehow slipped through the cracks. The end of the Second World War was a hectic time in America, and it's only natural that we let a couple of things slip in our excitement over defeating the Nazis. Who's going to be held responsible for this? Investigation? No, there won't. In fact, the War Relocation Authority was responsible for the decommissioning of the internment facilities, um, but that organization ceased to exist in 1946, so no. This is the Onion News Network. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. 
Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control of the airwaves. Toll free at 855-453. That is the Pro XPN toll free line, and you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. You got some Bitcoins, you want to send them our way, we have a Bitcoin tip jar. You can go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com. You'll find the address for the Bitcoin tip jar there. But you've got to have Bitcoins before you can share some with us. Uh, one of the things you can do to go get Bitcoins is go to cashintocoins.com. But in order to get Bitcoins, you have to have a Bitcoin wallet. So that's step number one. If you're looking to take the first step into the realm of Bitcoins, go to blockchain.info. They've got some great tools, including the best online Bitcoin wallet. If you've got an Android smartphone, you can easily download their app. Now, if you don't have an Android, if you've got an iPhone or something else, you can just use Blockchain's website. They've got a, uh, they're working on an HTML5 wallet that I believe is up and operational, blockchain.info. Go there. You can just use their website through your smartphone, and it makes it so easy to send and receive Bitcoins. You can even do it anonymously. There's tools to allow you to do that with blockchain.info. Join millions of other Bitcoin users and get your free Bitcoin wallet today at blockchain.info. You know, Brett, uh, before we go on here, there are other people who are on the line. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was important to talk a little bit further about the idea of anger. There was somebody who said something in the chat room, like, if you're not angry, you're ignorant or something like that. You're what asleep. Was you're asleep. Okay. So there's a, it's a fairly common viewpoint in kind of the, the activist world that you got to get angry and you got to get out there. Yeah. And I, I think that anger is a phase that a lot of people go through, and it's an understandable phase. I've been through it. Well, yeah, as Howard Beale said in the movie Network, that very famous line, if you know, if you're unfamiliar, you've probably seen clips of it somewhere, uh, where this news anchor kind of goes nuts on the air, and he says, first, you've got to get mad. Yeah, first. Mm-hmm. It's not all you want to be forever. Right. And you don't have to start there, but a lot of us do, and that's okay, because you know we've kind of gone along most of our lives thinking everything is under control, uh, and then I think we get to a point where we're like, wait a minute— Everything is under control, you know, and uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of uh, anger that, that comes from that. And because um, we feel like we've been lied to. We feel like we've yeah, been deceived. And you have. Yeah, and we absolutely have. You've and, been lied to and stolen from. Yep, yep. And a lot Some of people. Some cases abused, physically, caged. Yep. There's Absolutely. To be angry about. So, so anger first is natural, but it's no way to live. No, it's an unhealthy place to be. It's not something that's going to attract good people to you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not something that is going to persuade people to believe as you do. So, I think that getting out of anger as quickly as you possibly can is a very valuable thing. By all means, stay as angry as you want to as long as you want to, but don't expect to be particularly effective uh, while you're doing it. I think that getting out of that anger, as soon as you realize you're angry, try to focus on more positive things. There's a lot to be excited about in the world as well. I mean, we've got wonderful communications technology today, and you know, the internet is really helping spread the ideas of freedom. The Free State Project is having an effect. I mean, there's there are a lot of things that are positive that you should be focusing on rather than focusing all the things that make that could make you angry. There's no shortage of those things. No. So no. you can get totally lost in that and I've seen it happen to people I care about and we've tried to have, you know, an intervention with uh, one of those people in the past and and we lost him. Uh, I mean, he he left as a result of of his anger and the some of the the frustrations and the conspiracy theories fear and all that. Too. The fear. Fear yeah. too. Um, well, that's really kind of the basis of of anger, isn't it to some extent? Yeah, I, I think a lot of the time. Yeah, absolutely. And so, get, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say I, that's just what I wanted to get out there. I think anger is not useful. I mean, it, it it's something that everybody experiences, but it's not useful for our purposes, which is to persuade people to change their minds and embrace the ideas of liberty. Yeah, it's hard to look like like 
one thing that I've been saying a lot on, on my show is that if you want these ideas to spread, you have to make people uh, want what you have, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and if you walk around presenting yourself as a victim, which is part of it, right? Because that's where a lot of the anger comes from. Uh, I'm victimized by the state, that that kind of thing. Um, you don't look like somebody who who other people are going to observe and say, oh, that's, I want what that guy yeah, has. Yeah, exactly. I, those handcuffs look so comfortable. Um, I So I think that, you know, we should try to find what makes us happy within the realm of activism, what m- makes us experience, uh, you know, success and energy and put as much of our effort. I mean, that's what I do anyway. This is the lesson that I learned. I guess I shouldn't tell other people what they should do. But I learned, like, what makes me look successful? What makes me look like a winner? How can I show that to other people? And that's where my effort goes. Uh, and hopefully that influences other people in a positive way. Let's go to the phones. Your calls and thoughts here on Free Talk Live. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Robert is in Dayton, Ohio. You're on Free Talk Live. Robert. Hello. Hey there. I just want to say about the study, I'm like, I think I can understand what they're getting at about the whole study with homework stresses kids out. That uh, homework stresses kids out. Yeah, this is a news story or an, I guess a, a study that Brett had barely even begun to share with us. But go ahead with your uh, your thoughts, Robert. I think it's, it's kind of like elementary school is starting to look like college now. With all the deadlines and all these homework after projects you have to complete to get good grades. You know what I mean? It's starting to look more like college, from, in my opinion. Well, that's interesting. It seems like the demands that are being placed on kids generally are on the rise. And there's been a lot of criticism uh-huh. like that. But it's not like the work is getting any more challenging, especially with this new uh, Common Core um, implementation in almost all 50 states at this point. It seems like this is the most out in the open that the I, the this um, what's often referred to as the dumbing down of America has ever been. Um, th- this new curriculum that's being that's being introduced. So it's interesting. It seems like it's actually going both ways. I recognize what you're saying that there is more. Maybe we could call it regimentation in elementary yeah. school. Uh huh. But I see what you mean. Yeah. So it's it it really seems to be going uh, both ways as as school, you know, government school seems to be able to figure out how to do. They can go any way they want as long as it's in the wrong direction. Robert, yeah. thanks for sharing your thoughts tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. John is listening in Virginia Beach, Virginia. John, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi. Um hey. I'm uh, incredibly nervous. I'm, I'm a, I hope that doesn't uh, diminish the quality of your radio oh, broadcast. We never would have known had you not said. We're that, all uh, nervous, man. We're on the radio. It's fine. <laughs> it's Come, okay. Go ahead. It's okay. Um, I was, uh, a few months ago, I was charged with possession of uh, three controlled substances. Oh, and boy. today I went to court, and uh, I the maximum penalty for all of that would have been uh, seven years. Um oh. But luckily for me, the um, officer who uh, arrested me didn't feel like showing up to court. Um, so uh, my wow. attorney talked to the uh, he talked to the prosecutor Were and the you prosecutor facing basically felony said, charges. Uh, one felony and two misdemeanors. Um, wow! One, uh, and this is your, your, your hold on. It was your trial date, and he didn't show up. Um. I don't. I, I never heard the actual word trial, but. Um, uh, I, when were uh, you arrested? I was arrested in October, late October last Have year. Have you been to court prior to this? Yes. All right, stand by. We can come back with the rest of your story here in moments. More with John in Virginia Beach about his arrest and what happened in court today. Interesting. 450 free. You can take control here. This is Free Talk Live. That's the sound of your door being kicked in by an intruder with a single kick. Criminals know that your doors are weak and your alarm system can't keep them out. 
That's the sound of the same door, now protected by the Door Sentinel. Standard locks, deadbolts, and alarm systems can't prevent forced entry. Harden your door and door jam with the Door Sentinel. Go to MySafeDoor.com. That's MySafeDoor.com and enter coupon code SAFE for 15% off of your order. The Door Sentinel, your home's first line of defense. The TalkStream Live app for iPhone, iPad, and Android is the fastest and easiest way to access live talk radio anytime, anywhere. Download the free TalkStream Live app right now and see for yourself. You'll enjoy instant access to the best in live talk radio. Find your favorite shows and discover some new ones. The TalkStream Live app is available in the App Store, the Google Play Store, or visit TalkStreamLive.com. That's TalkStreamLive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. Still to come, we've got to dig into this homework story when we get a chance. But, of course, your calls come first here. 855-450-FREE. Also, Skype us at username lrn.fm. If you care about online privacy, you really should take the time to look into ProXPN. In fact, you can just go right now to proxpn.com slash FTL. And just download their app and get started with ProXPN. It is a global virtual private network that actually encrypts your online data, meaning that your ISP no longer will know what you're doing online when you're running ProXPN. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go grab the software right now. They've got free accounts. You can get started right now. And 
you're going to want to upgrade, of course, to the premium account where you get unlimited bandwidth and no limits on what you can do. Like, so for, for instance, if you want to torrent privately, you can do that with Pro XPN. Now, your ISP is probably keeping records of every website you visit and every search term you enter for, in some cases, up to five years. You can stop that tonight by going to proxpn.com slash FTL and getting their app and getting started. There's one for Windows, Mac, iOS, as well as Android devices. Plus, if you're a Linux user, you can email ProXPN. They'll give you instructions on how to get set up with Linux. It's pretty simple, uh, but it's a little different from the other operating systems. So proxpn.com slash FTL. They keep you private online, and you can get 20% off of the price of their premium account by using our discount code FTL20. Another thing ProXPN does, when you've got the premium account, you can select the different locations. They've got several servers around the world. You can choose which server you want to connect to, and that'll actually make it look like you're coming from that location. So when you visit websites that try to identify where you're coming from, they'll think you're in Singapore or the Netherlands or wherever it is you connect to. So again, protecting your privacy in a variety of ways. At proxpn.com slash FTL, you can get 20% off by using our discount code FTL20. That brings the price down to 5 bucks a month with the annual plan and... You get unlimited bandwidth, you can privately torrent, and you can select your server around the world. It's great value and a great product, and there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. The only thing you have to lose is your privacy, so uh, protect it by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Promo code FTL20. We go back to John in Virginia Beach. You were charged with possession of controlled substances, multiple controlled substances. You were facing a felony and misdemeanors. You went to court today for what was ostensibly to be your trial, but you said the officer didn't show up. What's the rest of the story? Yes. Um, uh, so uh, I, uh, uh, I, the crowd behind me kept of, of uh, people on the docket uh, kept getting smaller and smaller until I was practically the last person there. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I... Uh, uh, That's because they were waiting for the cop to show up. I have a feeling. Ex exactly, yeah. and then uh, the uh, the judge had to take a restroom break, so my uh, attorney got to talk to me for about a minute, and he told me that the judge is pretty pissed at the uh, at the officer for not showing up, and uh, uh, he indicated that that'd be a good thing for me. Um, and then uh, once they once they eventually just gave up on uh, the officer showing up. Um, my uh, attorney talked to the prosecutor, and uh, they came to an agreement that uh, the charges would be dropped if I complete 100 hours of community service in four months. And uh, that now, was the, the charges mainly what I, should have been dropped because the cop didn't show up, and that should have been the end of it. It sounds like they tried to finagle uh, to get some sort of obedience out of you, but I'm sure you were feeling like that was a hell of a deal considering you were facing felony a felony charge. Yeah, uh, and I was uh, I, I uh, uh, I'm fairly uh, legally ignorant, so I'm uh, not quite sure. Um, so you took you took exactly. the deal. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I don't blame you. I think that was this, probably the mm. best thing you could have done in that circumstance. But typically, uh, if if this was a, a trial, and you know, it sounds like it probably was a trial, because it sounds like you already had your arraignment, correct? Earlier. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, usually after trial, there's uh, there's an excuse me after arraignment, there's a trial. Although sometimes there's like a pretrial conference. But usually if the officer doesn't show up to a pretrial conference, that's no big deal. So I'm presuming this was your actual trial date. If they had started the trial process, your attorney should have been able to uh, object and motion to dismiss the case due to the prime witness not showing up. Uh, and that, that case should have been dismissed. I mean, that's the way it should go. However, they could have postpone the trial and then you know okay well a cop's not here and this is an important case so we'll just go ahead and continue this until a later date so considering that 100 hours of community service instead of felony conviction seems like a decent plea deal to take in that case yeah there, there was um well i don't know about other states but in virginia there's a first offender status where it's, if it's your first felony um it's uh, they will uh, if you uh, under if you follow certain um, uh, rules, then uh, you can basically get it wiped from your record, except for the fact that you took that status prior already. Um, so mm -hmm. I was that would have already protected me from uh, the uh, the a lot of the repercussions of the felony. But um, was this a public uh, defender? And, and I, uh, no. Um, 
did it. Uh, uh, it was, um, you paid his, for uh, He was a paid attorney. Yes. He was uh, kind of I, uh, so I question kind of his, I, you know, in the case of a public defender, I would expect them to go along with that particular deal. In the case of a paid attorney, I was, I'm kind of surprised. I would ask your attorney, why didn't you just go ahead and motion to dismiss the case entirely? I would like to ask. I would like to know the answer to that because, in theory, that case should have been thrown out. That judge should have dismissed those charges because nobody showed up to testify. Now, again, maybe his answer would be, "Well, I knew the prosecutor would go ahead and motion for a, a continuance and probably would have been granted it." Uh, so that would be my guess as to what his answer would be. But either way, I'd still like to know, especially since I was paying for that attorney. Mm. I'd like to know why he didn't do that. But at least you, uh, you're you not going to a prison cell, John. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. I think six hours was, uh, uh, on after the initial arrest was enough for me to want to avoid uh, incarceration as much as possible. I imagine so. But. Anything else you want to share about your experience? Uh, well, I, uh, if anybody has any, I'll be listening to the show for the rest of the night. If anybody has any recommendations for um, uh, liberty-oriented uh, um, uh, community service, um, because I'm mandated to give 100 hours of my labor to someone else, I'd like to uh, dispose of that as ethically as possible or I give it to the most deserving people. I don't know what the options are in Virginia. I do know that if you were in New Hampshire, you could do work for the uh, Church, of, Church of the Sword or the Shire Free Church, and you can actually get community service hours for doing liberty activism in New Hampshire. I don't know wow. if there's anything like that in Virginia. I highly doubt it. Um, you may just want to look into like a soup kitchen or homeless shelter or something like that. And I thank you for yeah, the call, John. Yeah, there's certainly no uh, All right, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yep, thank you. 855 450 free. But yeah, here, um, I, I actually did, when I got my speeding ticket, I had 11 hours of community service to do. And I did my community service by doing Don't Take a Plea Deal Outreach at the court. And uh, I'm grinning because that's amazing. Isn't it? That's, isn't it uh, wonderful? Uh, yes. Yes. And uh, I also did. Rich Paul was in jail at that time, so I was doing Rich Paul sign waves. We were out front of the jail uh, on the side of the road once a week, so that counted. And uh, so did my court outreach. And you just have a, a minister of the Shire Free Church sign off on this? In that case, it was Church of the Sword. One of their ministers oh, signed okay. off on this. All right. Yes. So you wouldn't be allowed to, because of your affiliation, sign off on your I own. I don't know. We haven't tried that yet. <laughs> <laughs> that will be. Very, very uh, clever. But it's great. I mean, all you have to do is have a New Hampshire nonprofit, be yeah. the one that certifies you, and those churches are New Hampshire nonprofits. Right, so right. It shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, that's a good question because obviously a lot of people We're serving are, the community. Uh, sure. Right. Sure. I, I think you are. Uh, a lot of people uh, probably find themselves in this situation, and sure. they. Uh, that's a great question. What What would be liberty-oriented community- uh, service. I have no do. idea what you could do in other places, but here in New Hampshire, you can do activism and get uh, get community service Ooh, hours. In Virginia, could you go tend the grounds at Monticello? Good question. As long <laughs> as you're doing it for, a, usually it's they required to be a nonprofit in Virginia. So. Yeah, that was Thomas Jefferson's plantation, by the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So more coming up here with your calls and thoughts. If you make the call, eight fifty five four fifty free. Also, we still have this story that Brett brought in yep. about homework and how detrimental it can be to young people, according mm. to one study. We'll get into that and take your calls as well. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. And if you have any uh, suggestions for our caller there as far as what he could do for his community service, feel free to call and share them. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com it's time to get your green on with the great green sale from Freeze-Dry Guy. 
Now through St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, cases of delicious freeze-dried vegetables, green beans, and green peas are now on sale at veteran-owned freeze-dryguy.com. You don't need to be Irish to feel like you have pots of gold with a healthy supply of these delicious, nutritious green vegetables. They're perfect for your emergency preparedness needs or outdoor activities from camping to RV travel. Green beans and green peas, easy to prepare, easy to enjoy, and now easier than ever to buy. How about some green backs in your wallet or purse just for ordering? Act now and Freeze Dry Guy will give you $25 in survival bucks for every case you purchase by St. Patty's Day. So get your green on now, veggie lovers. Call 866-404-3663, 866-404-FOOD, or log on to freezedryguy.com, freezedryguy.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You can give us a call at 855-450-FREE. You can also reach us on Skype. The Skype name is lrn.fm. Send us a request first and we'll approve you and then we can get you on that way. Ian has stepped away for uh, probably just this segment. He will return. I am Brett and uh, we're going to return to uh, your calls. We have Dave in Poughkeepsie. Dave, you are on Free Talk Live. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing good, Dave. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, I want to talk about why I'm angry, and uh, I'd also like to uh, talk about uh, but last night's show. Uh, Ian still won't apologize. Okay, to well, me. before you go on, let me let's just. Uh, you can see that Ian is not here this segment, and one of the reasons why I think he wanted to step away is because you know he didn't want you to, to continue to call in and use a national radio show to deal with this with this grievance. The other thing that I will say, and I, I will let you talk, and I hope we can have a constructive conversation, but if I feel like you're being non-responsive, in other words, if I say something or ask you a question and you just go back to demanding an apology, I will end the call because because I think a lot of people already heard enough of that and we are you know i mean i understand that you have feelings and all that day but we are trying to do a radio show here too and we can't just say the same thing over and all over I want again from him is a formal apology okay so i want him to say i just want him to 
want him to say those words, I'm sorry, because him and Daryl made fun of me a couple of nights ago. All I want for him to say are those two words. All right. I'm, I'm going to tell sorry. you, okay, I'm going to, if you bring that up again, the call ends. That Maybe I didn't make myself clear. That's, we'll do a, a one-strike policy. That was the one strike. Um, what I wanted to ask you is, you know, what's what's going on with you? That why that's so important. And I'm not. And if and the answer to this question is not Ian did this or Daryl did this, but what's going on that that makes that so important to you? I mean, these are two strangers. Why do you care what they do or what they think? They are not strangers at all because I have chatted with them on multiple occasions. How can they be strangers when I have chatted with them? Okay. You know, I, I have talked. They're, they're, they're not strangers because I have, I have, I have recorded their calls, multiple conversations, and I, I, I even try calling after hours, and the phone just keeps ringing and ringing and ringing. And well, you, you know, understand it, that it, that after hours is their their private time, so they wouldn't be obligated to take your call. Like you're certainly, you certainly recognize that you guys are not friends. You know, like the relationship is, you are a caller to a radio show they host, right? I am, a, I am a famous caller, like I was many years ago, back to WRRV, when I hung out at WRRV events. Everyone knew me back then, and I hung out with WRRV, PDH, way back in the 90s, hanging out at all of their events, and everyone knew me back then. So I'm trying to get myself, like, no, now because of, you know... You know uh, oh, my they, goodness, they I, have the best, I, I have the best idea. I'll tell you what I did. This is how I got myself known. Um, I started my own show. It worked beautifully. It took some time. It took some time. And, you know, I mean, you already have a YouTube channel. Uh, there is, I believe, in the in the Free Talk Live BBS, an appreciation thread dedicated to you. So you already have, you, you've shown the ability to upload videos to YouTube, and you already have quite a bit of buzz, positive or negative, because I'll tell you what, Dave, you know what, you know what I don't get enough of? Uh, I don't have enough haters. I wish I had more. Right. Because not because I want to immerse myself in anger, because I think that's terribly unhealthy and probably leads to a shorter life. But I I, I want to know that I'm getting beyond the choir, you know, so if you've got a good base of haters and you've got some technical skills, why aren't you doing your own show? And, you know, maybe that would help you. I mean, like you you recognize that you you've probably said this before you like you do have some anger issues. Right. Yes, I do have anger issues, and also— Don't you think having an outlet for that would might help you instead of just finding new— Because it seems like the pattern that, that I've, I've really— Tell me if I'm wrong. I don't want to be, like, diagnosing you or telling you how you should feel or anything like that. But, like, it seems like you're trying to play a victim here. And why would you do that when you could just be, like, the star of your own YouTube channel? I'd rather do that. I was ba- I keep on getting banned from the BBS message board by all the uh, the jerks on, on, on there. I keep on putting messages on there. They keep on deleting whatever, and, and then I was finally banned. I can't even view the site anymore. I have to go on some uh, block my block my ass or, or whatever in order to view Free Talk Live because there's also like uh, unblock my ass or whatever. I, I, I can't even you know block, I can't even view Free mm. Talk Live through my own ISP, and I've tried. I, I have tried ProXPN. I have tried that, and they are way extensive. $200 per month or, or whatever just to use their services? Really? $200 per week just to use their services? Really? ProXPN? Really? They so, are okay, 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 okay. Let let's, let's, let's not pile on here. Um, I think that... Uh, the, well, the question I would—I wanted to ask you how you felt about what was going on with Free Talk Live, but I'm guessing you feel uh, angry, maybe somewhat betrayed. Did you ever have experiences where you felt this way before Free Talk Live? Were you having problems elsewhere, or is the, are, the, are these new problems that you're encountering in the Free Talk Live forums and on the call-in lines? Or have the, were these problems that you experienced before? It's happening today because I keep on getting, you know, I, I want to pick. I, I was, I keep on getting banned from the BBS message board, and finally, I can't, even, I can't even view the site anymore because I have to go on, like, you know. On yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, you're just, you're whatever. saying the same thing. You're saying the same thing. Forget about that. What kind of people do? I mean, do you, do you think that there's going to be a lot of positive people that are attracted to you, especially when you show that you get so upset? 
about this stuff, that just that's like uh, attracting the the people who want to do bad to you. Right. So I would get out of the free talk live BBS. They'll miss you. They'll come looking for you. The people who who are giving you a hard time. You know, you ever you ever have that experience with a bully, Dave, where where you try to get away and then the bully says, oh, man, I'm just kidding. Don't go. Don't go. It's because they need you. Right. So don't give them what they want. Go somewhere else. Go do your own thing. Forget about Free Talk Live for a while. Forget about all these other shows. Forget about all these places that give you trouble, man. It's just stressing you out. Do you need more stress? Do you need more stress? I have I have dealt with bullies back in the 1990s, back all throughout high school. So and I. I kicked their asses. Okay, well, that's that's not an answer to anything, right? Because there's always – you. do you agree, I mean, that there's always somebody – like you could beat up all the bullies, you know? And then there's always somebody who could come along and, and beat you up, right? Like, there's oh, there's got to be somebody. You acknowledge that, there's, right? There's, oh, there's, oh, there's always somebody, but then I want to be the one who is the winner. I want to be able to, to, you know, to show them that I am the bigger person than they are. Because there's people on the BBS board uh, named Arch and, and, and a bunch of other people on there. You, who, you want to show them that you're the bigger person physically, like you're the tougher person, or you want to show them that you're the bigger person? Because being the bigger person is kind of like walking away, not engaging, not taking the bait. And I think that within like 24 to 48 hours, there, uh, they, I would, uh, Ian and Allie were, were talking about this on, on Monday night. Like uh, James Altshuler wrote, a, wrote an article for uh, Lou Rockwell, I think, about dealing with haters. Uh, if you just don't respond for 24 hours, they, they pretty much find the next thing to hate. You know, they don't, they, they're not going to sit around and wait for you to respond. They'll go find something else to hate if they're haters. So I would try to seek more positivity and and one way might to be find finding environments where you have more control dave so i would say you should start you want to be famous start your own show start my own show (laughs) that that, 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 that's even more extensive no 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 no, no, i can't it could not be simpler the do you have you have a computer right yeah do you have a microphone no okay do you have a camera no what do you do how do you make youtube videos I just I, I just use my computer and stuff, you know. Okay, so but there's it's recording sound and video, so you have everything you need to start your own show. If your show goes on for a while, then maybe you could upgrade equipment. I started my show for with a computer I already had and like a twenty dollar initial investment. All right, so I would say find a place where you have more control. You don't have any control over how things work on Free Talk Live. Ian can hang up on you whenever he wants. Ian doesn't have to answer when you call after hours. The people in the BBS are going to pick. This is a place where you are a victim, right? And that's if, if you want to be that. You have no control here. So if you want to feel better, like maybe you just want to feel bad. Do you, do you think you when just... When I call after hours, I want to be able to speak with him. I, I tried calling last night. That's not how it works. Ringing and ringing and ringing. Yeah, but that's not but how I it works. I want to speak with him. I, I want to speak to whoever I call after hours. Okay, well, I've enjoyed our conversation. Uh, I'm going to let it go, but I would try to find some place where you can feel more positive and, and less like a victim, and Free Talk Live might not be the place. There's more coming up. Hour number three is on the way. This is Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-453. Here's something you don't hear on the radio every day. Someone who can't see. I am totally blind, and I go through periods where I'm unable to sleep at night and feel like I'm constantly running but can never quite catch up. But this isn't a sleep problem. It's something called Non24. Learn about the link between total blindness and your symptoms. Visit learnmorenon24.com or call 855-856-2424. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. 
Do you feel like there's nothing you can do about the inexorable growth of government? I did too, before I heard about the Free State Project. The Free State Project is a project to get 20,000 liberty lovers to move to New Hampshire to have liberty in our lifetimes. Early movers for the FSP are getting elected, involved in their communities, and participating in civil disobedience. Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Wednesday, March 12, 2014. Here's the news. Radio VR News. Republican David Jolly is the winner of a special election for Congress in Central Florida. Some are saying this might be a test of the upcoming midterm congressional elections. Ed Donahue has the details. This was an early test of President Obama's health care overhaul leading up to the midterm elections in November. Jolly didn't mention the issue directly in his victory speech. This race is not about defending a broken agenda in Washington or advancing a broken agenda in Washington. This race is about representing Pinellas County. He also spoke about dispensing with the rancor and vitriol of the last five months. I will always look to empower individuals and families before I will look to empower government. Jolly defeated Democrat Alex Sink, who outspent her opponent by more than three to one. I'm Ed Donahue. President Obama is hosting Ukraine's prime minister today as the crisis over Russia's presence in Crimea deepens. White House correspondent Mark Smith has more. The Oval Office meeting with Arseniy Yatsenyuk comes as Crimea prepares for a weekend referendum on splitting from Ukraine and possibly rejoining Russia. But the president's declared that vote illegal. Spokesman Jay Carney says the Kremlin should be negotiating with Ukraine's interim government while telling its troops in Crimea to stand down. Take an off-ramp here so that these disputes can be resolved diplomatically. However, with those forces showing no sign of a pullback and with NATO sending troops and planes to patrol near Russia's borders, so far the off-ramp is looking like the road not taken. Mark Smith at the White House. <laughs> A plan to phase out government-controlled mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac has advanced in Congress. Correspondent Mike Grassi explains why some in Congress want the government out of the mortgage business. Democratic Senator Tim Johnson, who chairs the Banking Committee, and Senator Mike Crapo, the senior Republican on the panel, have agreed on a plan to create a new government fund to replace Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Together, the two companies own or guarantee nearly half of all U.S. mortgages. Under the Johnson-Crapo plan, investors would pay fees in exchange for insurance on mortgage securities they buy, and the last resort guarantor would be the government. News of the agreement sent shares tumbling in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Mike Gracia, Washington. American Airlines is being sued over tax incentives because of the way and where it buys jet fuel. Correspondent Ross Simpson has the details. The agency that oversees public transportation in Chicago is suing American Airlines for falsely claiming to buy vast amounts of jet fuel from a small office in a rural community in order to avoid paying tens of millions of dollars in taxes in the nation's third largest city where the actual work is done. The lawsuit comes a year after the same agency, the Regional Transportation Agency, accused United Airlines in a lawsuit of doing the same thing in the same small town. I'm Ross Simpson. The Affordable Care Act sign-up deadline is fast approaching, which is why President Obama's comedy video, pitching sign-ups for his health care plan, has gone viral. Mark Smith reports on the funny interviews that's trying to reach those who might not watch traditional news outlets. 
At one point, the president sparring with Zach Galifianakis on Between the Ferns. His mock talk show on the Funny or Die website was racking up a million views per hour. Is it going to be hard in two years when uh, you're no longer president and people will stop letting you win at basketball? How, how does it feel having a three-inch vertical? But White House spokesman Jake Carney says the serious purpose was getting young people to buy health insurance. We're looking for creative ways to do that. This was one of them. And indeed, officials say the video quickly became the top referring site for the Fed's healthcare.gov. Mark Smith at the White House. In health news, the Food and Drug Administration has approved a nerve stimulating headband as the first medical device to prevent migraines. Tim McGuire has the details. The cephaly is a battery powered plastic band worn across the forehead. Its electrode emits a low powered current to stimulate the nerve endings linked with migraine pain. A small study found that patients using the device had fewer migraines per month than those using a placebo device, but it didn't completely eliminate the headaches. Another study of more than 2,300 people found 53% saying they were satisfied with the device, which is made by a Belgian company. Tim McGuire, Washington. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. A report released Tuesday by physicists at Stanford University revealed that the entire known universe from the whole of human civilization to the totality of matter and energy is actually the fictional setting of a cop show called Hard Case. According to authors of the report, existence as we know it was created solely to provide the framework for the primetime drama that airs weekly in a parallel universe and that every historical event prior to the show's September 2008 pilot, including the Renaissance, World War II, Evolution, the September 11th attacks and the presidential administration of Washington through Clinton never actually happened and are merely part of the elaborate backstory crafted by hard case creator and showrunner Dominic Egan. We used to believe that our universe operated under immutable laws of thermodynamics and gravitational relativity, but now we know everything just comes from the minds of hard cases 12 staff writers. Overall, it seems like a very well-written show. Physicists have theorized that the universe as we know it will cease to exist whenever hard case airs its final episode. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show. Username is lrn.fm. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Brett. Brett's here from the School Sucks Project. You can go to schoolsucksproject.com to get lots more of content. Great uh, content from Brett and the gang, I guess. Uh, Jason Osborne's still on the show with you, yeah? Uh, when we can get together and do it, we did uh, some Liberty Forum interviews with uh, Excellent. Derek J. About uh, some updates with him, Jeffrey Tucker, he's Carlos Morales. Back. Yeah, Derek I'm very Jay's excited. Back. Very excited. Uh, he's going to be back in about two months. I'm pretty jazzed about that as well. Uh, so, schoolsucksproject.com, go get more Brett there. And, Brett, we started out the show tonight, and yeah. you kind of teased a story. We got off on a tangent, and then a bunch of phone calls came in. So, we really haven't had a chance to, to dig in at all into a study that you found about homework. Yes, absolutely. This is from reason.com. And the title of this piece again, Homework Can Turn Your Kid Into a Stressed Out Wreck, Researchers Say. So it's good that there's some backing for this. I'm going to roll it back a couple sentences, Ian, just mm -hmm. to give people some context if they're just joining us. Despite the variety of public, private, and charter schools near me, all of the parents I know complain that their kids have too much damned homework. Now, when we complain to teachers and administrators, we'll be armed with research suggesting that professional educators are trying to turn our kids into socially stunted weirdos. Hmm. Yeah, really, a study published last year in the Journal of Experimental Education takes a dim view of the heavy workloads under which high school kids in the 10 high-performing high schools in upper-middle-class communities stagger. Results indicated that students in these schools average more than three hours of homework per night. That is so sad. Three hours of homework God. a night. I mean, they're in school for eight hours a day. And, of course, you got to get up an hour and a half or whatever before yeah. school, get on the bus. And so how much time are you sitting on the bus, you know, and a good 
30 minutes to 45 minutes on the bus in some cases. I mean, back one way, and so maybe an hour or two hours on the bus, depending on where you live. How the hell do you have time to do anything? Right. Yeah, and, and the tone that it sets for the day, five days a week, too. Like, we talked about this on the show before. I think we did a we did a 15 Habits uh, for Success one time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, one of the things I said I really like to do that really makes me feel better, maybe you're in the same kind of position, is to start a day slowly, if mm. possible. You know, get up. Take it easy. Yeah, I don't know if you're a big coffee drinker. I don't drink coffee. I drink coffee. I like, I like a cup in the morning. It's very nice. You know, get up, make that coffee. Go and, I, and the first thing I do is I try to have good habits, so I don't go right to Facebook because that's chaos. Yeah, I go. To, I look at my calendar. I look at uh, Evernote, this program I use to stay organized. Oh yeah, I started using that by the great, way. Great, yeah. great, great. Uh, and I just kind of get the lay of the land mm-hmm. in life. See what's gonna you know get some get some stable ground to stand on. Sip the oh, coffee. Oh, that's smart. I usually go right to Facebook. <laughs> vape a little bit. Sit back in my chair. Look out the window. Yeah. As, at, the, at the traffic going by. All these people going to work. Yep. And, uh, you know, I mean, nothing, nothing wrong with that, but, uh, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have the situation where I work at home and I can give myself a slow start and what a difference that makes in how you feel mm, now sure. flash back to the 1990s when I don't know if you were your, in high school. your household was like mine, but mom is like, get out of bed. You got to go to school. Right. You're sleep, it's, 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 the bus is going to be here in 20 minutes. I hated that. Yeah. So the beginning of the day is frantic. You have no time to yourself. You're in a rush. What kind of a mood does that put you in for Not the whole so day? Great. Then you no. spend seven hours in school. Which uh, is awful. Generally yeah. awful. You got to have an extracurricular for your college application. And then you come home, three hours of homework. And I, you know, the, the way I made my living before I was able to- Was it to, that bad for you in the 90s, three hours? I don't feel like no, it was that No, and bad. I didn't do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always did the- My strategy, uh, in the, you know, towards the end of the high school years was to do the homework because yeah. I never studied for tests and I would bomb usually a lot of the tests because yeah. I just- Yeah, Well, first of all, when I would do the homework, I wouldn't actually read the book. So I would just kind of, you know- You'd look at the questions in the book and then try to go back and find the answers, but never, I never once in my entire high school career actually ever read a textbook. Yeah. You know, the other thing that's interesting too, like you're just a couple years younger than me, I think, but yeah, it might 33 be three. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So it might just be the couple years that makes the difference, right? Because high school was way harder for me than college mm-hmm. because hmm. when I got to college, suddenly the internet was there. You know, so okay. you probably got to enjoy a couple years of that in high school when it might have been easier to find. Some things. It was a primitive internet. It was pretty primitive. It yeah. was pretty primitive. But I remember just like I there was need, no Wikipedia back then. There was when no I was on Wikipedia, <laughs> right? And there was probably not even anything like Spark Notes back then. Mm. But th- none of the teachers knew about it at that point yep. for sure. Because most of my college professors were in their fifties and, and when the internet was new, um, I just remember being able to research things online, get answers to questions, and it made college much easier than high school, which was yep. such drudgery. Um, so yeah, I never did three hours of homework because I was a bad student. That's what they told me. (laughs) I managed to pass, uh, without doing any like reading of the textbooks and studying for tests. But so for me, like if I did homework, it would help bring my grades up to where I wouldn't totally, you know, bomb. Sure. And you know, I, I do understand uh, just on another note too, because I don't want to glamorize being a bad student. If you are going to stay in school, you know, and if you are going to get a high school diploma, you might as well do the best you can because I will say this. I will agree with what my parents told me when I was 16 that um, I probably would have had more opportunities, you know, as far as college was concerned, if I had done better in high school. Yeah, so, but what good is college? Oh, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <but> never mind. <laughs> and college seems like a total waste of money to me. And I wish I could have the time back personally because you want to talk about being harried. I yeah. mean, when you're in college, at least I wasn't falling asleep on the way to school. I mean, be- right. when I finally got off the school bus and was able to drive myself to school, I wasn't ever falling asleep on the way to high school. But I sure did a couple times on the way to college because I was wor- I was working and going to college, I was working two jobs in college and going to college, and it was just just exhausting. Well, my my real answer to your question, and this is what I told my 13-year-old nephew, who was also struggling in school, much to the chagrin of all the adults who were listening to what I had to say, mm. uh, I said, yeah, you know, school is BS, and you would be better off 
you know, getting a job, being an entrepreneur, at least getting out and, and doing something, learning a skill, because you're not going to do it there. But if you're going to stay in school, if you're going to stick it out in school, because uh, you want to go to college, you should try to get into the best college possible. Like if you can get into Brown University, if you can get into Harvard, uh, not that those places aren't soul sucking in their own right in many aspects, but if that's the only college that's worth something, or unless you're graduating from college with, you know, a very usable mechanical or electrical engineering degree, something like that, college either needs to have a very specific purpose or it needs to be an A plus school. So that yeah, you've got to know why you're going to college. Your, your yes. reason for going to college shouldn't be because everyone's doing it, or because your parents said you you should, or because everyone in school says that's the the right thing to do. You should have a very specific plan and, and goal that what that you want to accomplish. Absolutely, a career path in mind, etc. A lot of people go to college and they have no idea why. They're just there because that's the reason they're supposed to be there is because they've been told they were supposed to be there and they don't know what they want to do. They change their major two or three times in the the time that they're in college and basically waste a bunch of money and time. Yeah, and it's, it's an expensive sad. exploration. It's really sad. So yeah. uh, more with the, the homework, though. Yeah, so absolutely. Detail. So last sentence. Results indicated that students in these schools average more than three hours of homework per night. Students who did more hours of homework experience greater behavioral engagement in school, but also more academic stress, mm. physical health problems, and lack of balance in their lives. No kidding. How could there be any balance? You know, the, the that's all there. That's all school. School, school, school. You eat, sleep, and breathe it. That's terrible. Yeah, church on Sunday. Because um, kids get homework on the weekend too. That's right. Yeah. And projects. I made my living for a long time as a tutor, right? So I was always trying to fit to do SAT tutoring. Mm -hmm. I was. I gave up on academic tutoring because you're just like an enforcer for the school, and Ooh, it's really gross. terrible. But trying to wedge myself in. Sometime during the week, like making a schedule for the whole week with all these, like if I had 10 clients at the same time, mm -hmm. was so difficult because none of the kids had any free time. You know, they were just being moved from one place to another, school or extracurricular or homework or band or something like but that. But parents have believed this is necessary, yes. that this is the way it's supposed to be. You're saying this study has found differently. We'll get into more here in moments. Our toll-free number, if you want to share your experience, maybe you're currently in school and you can Please. Uh, you can say, yes, this is really the load of homework that we're having. Uh, 855-450 free. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. 
I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want right here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. So feel free to reach us in that way if you prefer. We're going to continue here on the topic that we have about homework. In fact, we've got some people that would like to discuss that very topic on Skype. Eight fifty five four fifty free is again the uh, the toll free number. Our Skype username lrn.fm. Let's go to Skype where uh, Matthew is on the line with us in Connecticut. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Brett. Hello, Matthew. Hello. Hey. Hi. Uh, I want to tell you that you're absolutely right. I'm actually in the middle of my approximately uh, three hours of homework right now. So. And you're going uh, to a government high school. Yeah, that's correct. What sort of what is the three hours? I mean, of what which classes are we talking about? What are the assignments? What are you What are you doing tonight? Uh, tonight I'm doing a chemistry lab write up. That's actually one day late, so I can only get partial credit for it. So it's kind of demoralizing. Um, <laughs> and yeah. I'm also doing. Um, I have to do some English homework. I have to read Hamlet, um, which I don't. Oh you know, God! I well, hated no, <laughs> Shakespeare. Yep, I agree with Ian. Shakespeare is awful. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like our teacher told us that, like, you know, the whole um, to be or not to be speech was like, you know, the most profound thing in English literature. And she went on and on about that. And, you know, it's just about suicide. And I I asked her, you know, couldn't any teenager make the same sort of complaint to their parents or whatever? And, and, you know, in their own vernacular. Uh, I don't know. She, She thought that was a good question. But, yeah, I don't really like it. I mean, the whole idea of having to read assigned books, like I read my own literature. I don't want to have to be bothered with that, you know? I mean, if I was interested in it, I would take it upon myself to go read Shakespeare if I saw some value in it, you know? Yeah, I just remember, I guess I I shouldn't apply the blanket statement that Shakespeare is awful, because I guess I'm in the minority on that opinion. Uh, He's, you know... It's awful to read. I can't handle it. When I, yeah, when I was 14, it wasn't empowering to read that. You can barely understand the language. And, you know, if there was... You should feel dumb. Yeah, if there was a course in Shakespeare where you go through the grammar of Old English... And you learn what all these words mean, and then you're empowered to read Shakespeare instead of just like, you know, passing uh, or going up and down the rows in your English class and stumbling through whatever the the reading is. Like mm-hmm. we would go around and read out loud. So it took something that certainly has a lot of merit as art. I mean, Shakespeare or whoever wrote those books. I'm not being a conspiracy theorist. I'm mm-hmm. just saying there's theories that other people <laughs> yeah, wrote right. that stuff. Um 
Yeah. Uh, whoever wrote that, uh, they were certainly uh, pioneering a style that has been replicated and, and, and copied and, and praised endlessly in uh, Western culture. So I'm not going to say that it's value less, but to force it on 14 year olds or how old are you, Matt? I'm 16. I'm a junior. Yeah. So when, when were you introduced to it? Uh, well, I read Othello in eighth grade. That was my first Shakespeare, and I was only 13. Yeah, yeah. So 13, 14, I think, is when most people are, are introduced to it. So that's chemistry and English. What else you got going on? Um, I have, oh, a math class. It's actually not, I'm taking pre-calculus, honors, and discrete math. And I have some discrete math homework, which is just this weird, like, sort of statistics-like math class. And I just have... About an hour of that. So when when did you get home today from school? When did you start on the the homework, and when do you feel like you're going to be done with it? Um, I'm I got home. School ends at two p.m. I get home around two thirty, like a half hour on the bus, and I just take a nap instantly. Like I only get maybe like five five hours of sleep, six if I'm lucky each night. So I usually just sleep right when I get home. But all after, right, what time are you waking up for school? Like five thirty, six o'clock. Uh, five forty-five. You ought to tell somebody you need about nine hours of sleep. So I don't, you know, I, I'm being half kidding, but talk to mom, talk to the teachers, say I need four more hours of sleep because you know at your age and in your activity level, um, I, I'm sorry, you know, you're. It seems like you're getting kind of worn down. Do you feel that way or? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and it, it, uh, I don't know if the sleep has a lot to do with it, but uh, I was going to bring up, I kind of disagree with what you said about like, if you're going to go to school and you're going to be there anyway, maybe you have parents that don't uh, agree with like homeschooling uh, philosophy or whatever, yeah. and you have to be there, that you should just do the best you can. Like, I kind of disagree with that. You should just do the best you please, can. Yeah. For- please tell me why. Please tell me why. Okay. This is why, because it, I don't think it's that simple, at least in my um, experience, it's not. It's... um. You know, when I go to school, when you read things, and I don't think every teenager has, but when you re- when you read things like uh, Civil Disobedience and uh, Walden, and perhaps like Edison or Ben Franklin's uh, autobiography, and you're exposed to some kind of like literature or media, and you understand that childhood can be, or just I don't know, life in general it doesn't have to be su- uh, working your way or struggling through some institutions, uh, you know force or whatever, yeah. then it becomes exceedingly difficult to comply on a daily basis with all this stuff. Like, you know, having just having a routine, even if it's not the worst, you know, I mean, even if it's just in a warm building and you're just going from classroom to classroom, seat to seat, and it's not like torture. I mean, it's, it's, it's like psychological, you know, it's maybe it's psychological, I don't know, torture, whatever, but it's, it becomes extremely hard just to sit there and listen to what the teacher is saying. Like, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's just so demoralizing. I mean, it's not like you can be like, you can rationalize in your head. It's not as easy as just rationalize like, oh, I'm going to be here anyway. Yeah. Let's just get ease. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of working through a lot of other, um, you know, psychological factors. And I don't know, it's, it's very complicated. It's I a think. rock and a hard place. And I, I don't know if you, how long you've been listening, but I do a show called School Sucks Podcast. I was a teacher for a number of years. Our website is schoolsucksproject.com. And one of the messages that I, that I wanted people like you to get is for, to you, uh, you know, to be able to hear from an adult who has been on the other side of the classroom that what you feel is right. You're not defective for feeling the way you do. Nothing is wrong with somebody like you for feeling this way mm-hmm. or observing these things. You are absolutely right. The adults who are telling you something else are kidding themselves because a lot of the time, I think, you know, we as adults don't want to look back and face what was done to us. That we were lied to, that we were deceived, that we were forced to do well, things we don't want to do. Well, there's a, a rationalization that happens, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, so I mean, around here, there's a there's some critics of the school system. The Liberty community is very critical of the school system, but the people who support the system will say things like, "Well, I went to the government schools and I turned out fine." Yes, yes, right. And from their yeah, perspective, my- they did. You know, they're able to pay the rent. They're they're taking care of themselves and their families. And right. you know, they feel like, how dare you attack this system? It did good for me. But that's that's you understand, Ian, that that's a mantra that they're doing. That's that's self talk that they're engaging in because they. Who could argue with the the idea that school sucks or that the schools don't work? Like everybody knows that. You know, and that's that's why I do the show, because it attracts young people who are already sold on the idea that school sucks to the ideas of liberty. Mm -hmm. You know, so 
if people really think about it, I think are really capable of being honest with themselves, aside from you know, some true believers and and uh, maybe very committed teachers, everybody knows, you know, we have forced uh, associations and we have voluntary associations and activities. You, you can tell the difference because the things that you choose to do voluntarily give you satisfaction. And the things that you're forced to do are an imposition and... Uh, you know, we don't enjoy them, and they make us upset. Hey, Matthew, great call tonight, man. Appreciate preach. You want me to keep him? Yeah, yeah, right. keep him. You want to stick around, Matthew? Uh, sure, yeah. All right, hang That'd on, man. Great. We'll bring you back here in a moment. 855 450 free. Seems like a sharp kid. More on the way here. You can uh, take control here on Free Talk Live. Skype username is lrn.fm. We'll continue in moments. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin? Any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Because we are smothering in spam, please do not reply to all when you can instead reply. I was recently among over a hundred invited to a corporate reunion. It's always a warm affair, and that's the problem. Enthusiasm for our upcoming get-together caused many recipients to RSVP the organizer with a cheery reply to all. I can't wait. Then others piled on with a reply to all to that. Then the, I'm out of my office now, auto responders joined in. So I replied to all, asking that we all reply only to the organizer. Hey, at least I tried. One invitee, apparently retired, shot back, point taken, but I really like seeing the responses since they're so positive. Smiley face. This better be an open bar. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. 
While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free. Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want here toll free at 855 450 free. We've been talking about homework, however, and yes. how it's incredibly. Damaging, apparently, according to one study, to young people in the not just government schools, but private schools as well, because there are a lot of schools that have this idea that homework is this valuable thing uh, that instead could end up really stressing uh, young people out and causing some damage. I, I think it's a problem that originates in the public schools, certainly, because the philosophy is when things don't work, try more of them harder. You know, I mean, that's that's pretty much a, a government uh, method of solving problems, right? Don't go back. Don't examine the roots of a problem. You know, don't look at individuals. Uh, just give them more work more frequently. There's lots of talk about, you know, extending school years and all that. So, yeah, we were talking about how it's apparently three hours a night is what yeah. is typically assigned for homework these days. And that doesn't allow anyone who's a student to have any time to develop any sort of other interests besides taking care of the requirements of the classroom. Yeah. So you can't uh, – What we've seen examples here and there of young people who've been able to have the time, maybe because they're homeschooled or unschooled or something like that, but have had the time – to create their own businesses, to be entrepreneurs, and to innovate and come up with new ideas. You're not innovating in a classroom. You're just doing whatever it is that you're assigned to do. Uh, right. There's no, you know, there's no novelty to that. You're just doing what the same group of kids did that same time of year last year. You're treading over the same ground. But when we see young people having the freedom to innovate and be entrepreneurial and create their own uh, you know, businesses or ideas or inventions, we see all kinds of really creative stuff come up because these young people – they haven't been beaten down as much as adults. They haven't been. I mean, that's kind of the process of going to school is beating young people into being becoming obedient serfs uh, when they finally get out. But generally, young people, they're not as restricted uh, in their, their mindset as older people who've been programmed for their whole life kind of by this system. So they're able to think outside of the box and come up with neat, uh, neat ideas. And so I think that that's one of the real tragedies here is the unseen, right? Like we know that students are supposed to spend all this time on homework, and that's supposedly a good thing for them. But really, what would be best is if they had the time and the freedom to find out what was really right for them, to find the areas of life that they think are most interesting and exciting and focus in that and see what grows out of that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're talking about so much time of every day filled that they're, it's risking their own identity. Pretty much in a lot right, of they're cases. just a student. Yeah, at that point, yeah. you know, uh, there's a really neat idea that one of our listeners has come up with. It is a imagine this: it's being able to spend your bitcoins with a credit card through a completely decentralized non-bank system. You swipe, and bitcoin is removed from your bitcoin wallet, meaning that bitcoin would then be just as easy to use as money in the meat space world. If this technology sounds awesome to you and you feel like it might be worth checking out as a possible investment, uh, Temper, who's the guy behind this, is looking for investors, and you can help him by going to his Indiegogo campaign at mybtc.cc. That's mybtc. Dot cc. So let's go back to Matthew. He's still on the line with us here. You wanted to hang on to him. He seems like a real bright guy at uh, age 16 in the government school system. He's been explaining to us his homework load, some of the you know ridiculous uh, stuff that he's being asked to do. But Brett, uh, what else did you want to say? Well, I just wanted to make sure, Matthew, you felt like you were heard. I know I had some some things to say, and I think you raised a really good point that there is obviously uh, not just more detail, uh, but you are kind of between a rock and a hard place, right? When you start to realize that, uh, you know, some of the problems with school, but you don't feel like for, for one reason or another, parents, other circumstances, that you could just leave school. And I, and I think uh, there's, there's a lot of people who are in the same position as you, and then it becomes a question of school survival. Uh, so am, am I capturing it correctly? Do you have... Uh, you know, friends, people you can talk to who have a similar mindset or find themselves in a similar position? Well, yeah, I mean, I do agree that it becomes a question of school survival, uh, you know, how to survive in that environment uh, daily. And my friends, they don't really, 
they don't feel as strongly about it as I do. I think. I mean, some of I have a, a libertarian friend who I talk about it sometimes. But he he still you know he's in like AP classes still, and he still seems pretty content and stuff. I don't know. I feel that like I am probably one of the most uh, you know dissatisfied or daily like, you know reminded of it daily of my friends. But you know some of them feel similarly. They just they don't really. I don't know. It's not like as as big a deal to them. They're more compliant. Have you ever gotten any pushback or like explicit disagreement with some of your friends? Like, oh no, Matthew, you're wrong. It's you know so important and it's even uh, great. Yeah, I have. Uh, I made friends, uh, especially in middle school, with a lot of uh, the top students. You know, because I'm very interested in, in academia and edu You know, think. Uh, things like reading and stuff. So actually, I would tend to the, I guess, like the nerdy kids or kids who get really good grades. When I talk to them about it, they are absolutely fine. And they're like, you know, whatever. I mean, they like going to class. They are very em emotionally invested in what the teacher has to say to them about them and stuff. I feel that that's really a big deal to them. And they'll argue with me saying, you know, I don't know, like that it's justified. It's perfectly fine. Like, don't make, you know, yeah. Yeah, That's I mean, the reason why I ask is because in the last segment I made this blanket statement like everybody knows school sucks. And that's not true, obviously, right? And there's, yeah, I don't, I don't think, think it's true. Yeah, the more we thought about it, the more exceptions to my uh, rule we could probably find. So, um, yeah, I, I th I'm— I think they just—I'm uh, sorry. I think they just, like—I think a lot of kids just accept it, even if they don't embrace it. Like some kids embrace it that are, at, you know, if they're at the top of the class or whatever. And, you know, some of the kids at the top of the class really embrace it and really get into it. A large majority, I feel, are very like oblivious to the fact that it's okay to say or even think about um, not going to school or that that it's wrong or what's going on there is wrong because you're just taught like doing your work and like that's your daily achievement. Like you know, even if I didn't like it or if I got distracted talking to my friend, oh, I did some work and that was good. And you get rewarded even monetarily some uh, sometimes by your parents. And you know, there's so many things that make kids feel that it's a good thing that they don't even bother the question. They wouldn't even think of questioning it. I mean, I think that there's a maybe a smaller population of kids that are dissatisfied with it than than you initially stated um or at least that's in my, in my school at least in my experience where where are you in connecticut because that actually matters <laughs> uh south windsor oh okay is it, what is that like a fancy area or what um, uh south windsor it's a it's a, it's a suburb of uh, well, could we call it a suburb of hartford it's it's a little ways from hartford but it's, right yeah it's near hartford yeah it's yeah. a suburb yeah, and most of Connecticut. I mean, Connecticut is either you're either rich or uh, you live in the hood. <laughs> I, I mean, it re it really is the income disparity in that state uh, is is pretty extreme. And obviously, there is some middle class there, but it is uh, I think probably the most significant income disparity uh, in the country. Last last I saw, so uh, you know, there's a lot of money, and there's uh, there's and that translates to from my experience working in Massachusetts, which is very similar to Connecticut, a lot of comp uh, competition um, and a lot of keeping up with the Joneses. Well, I know that when I was in school, I didn't think it was very great. I mean, most of the people I knew thought school sucked, but then mm -hmm. again, I didn't run with the goody two shoes crowd. So I'm sure they would have had a different perspective. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm really, I'm really happy that you're out there, Matthew, because, you know, you're thinking for yourself. It's clear that you have, uh, you know, some kind of identity of your own. You're asking these questions and, uh, it's, it's encouraging, uh, for me, uh, even if you provide information contrary to uh, to things I um, you know I push on my show uh, frequently, I'm I'm happy to get the get the feedback. And I I think you made some really good points about yeah, it's not just as black and white. If if you're going to stay in school, you know, might as well get all A's and go to Brown University because uh, not every, not everybody has that option. And um, you know, there is a site in uh, SchoolSurvival.net that mm -hmm. has a lot of good resources too. Um, that that might be worth might be worth checking out. And um, Matthew, it, thank you. Yeah. By the way, anything else you want to share with us tonight? Uh, just please wish me luck tomorrow. <laughs> Good luck. Good Thanks luck for the sir. call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Of course, you may call in our toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. We've got Nathan in Texas, also on Skype. Go ahead, Nathan. Uh, I was curious about the last caller. Uh, he brought up. He's studying Shakespeare. Is that right? He is, just yes. as almost everyone is forced to study in government high school. Well, I had a few things to say about that, and I wanted to ask Brett about what his philosophy is on what should be taught in school. Stand by. We'll get to that discussion here in moments. Shakespeare and philosophy of teaching all on the way here in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, which are coming up next. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. It's Free Talk Live. 
The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. Does advertising on the Genesis Communications radio network actually bring positive results? Let's ask Thomas Baldrick from Free Strike Guy. Thomas, talk about customer service at GCN. GCN is extraordinary in how they take care of their customers. The bottom line, Freeze Dry Guy keeps advertising on GCN because it Works. If you'd like to experience unbelievable customer service, call Lee Wickenhauser at 877-996-4327, extension 107. Please pay attention, folks. AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com is a Christian, veteran-owned wholesale preparedness company. Our mission is to get the Word of God out to all those in need of a Bible and who cannot afford one. We also provide great-tasting freeze-dried food from only 50 cents per serving, GMO-free food, over 1,000 preparedness items. Plus, for a limited time, type in the word Genesis at checkout and receive 10% off your total purchase. That's AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. Free Talk Live. The TSA increasing the invasiveness of their pat downs. They're no longer going to use the backsides of their hands. They're going to be touching. Now you. they're going to be grabbing it full That's on. Right, all over. And what is their justification for this? I've heard this, but that's I all the terrorism that's not. been happening. That, uh, why you know, do they have to use the front of their hands now? Well, did, the, was there any was there an event? Did they use a certain event where something got through no. that no. they would have felt if they'd used the front of their hands instead no. of the back of their hands? They just no. want to encourage you to go through the new sniffing what device. Gonna, what's yeah, what's going what it, to be their explanation when they need, when they have to use their penis to pat you down? <laughs> <laughs> what is the, what is their justification going to be then? <laughs> my hands aren't sensitive enough to catch everything. <laughs> well, it's not like you can read Braille with that thing, my friend. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah. They, I mean, well, your lips are very sensitive. Oh, you have a lot of nerve endings in your lips. So <laughs> when the hands are no longer good enough. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. I'm Mark Stevens of the No Stay Project, and are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're only helping the government. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, spread it. So get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Be free. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you want. Even in these remaining moments, there's enough time for you and your thoughts at 855-453. That's 
450-3733. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And we're going to go back to Skype, but also want to remind you to check out Derek J's victimless crime spree. We talked briefly that Derek J is coming back to New Hampshire. His two-year suspended sentence will be up in May, and he's very excited about returning to New Hampshire and being part of the Free State Project again because you know it's just a depressing thing living in Philadelphia, which is where he currently lives. And from what I'm told, he's he's been having kind of a tough time yeah, uh, there yeah. because there's no chance for freedom to succeed in a place like that. Uh, is you know you look confused, Brett. In the birthplace of liberty, no, I'm Philadelphia. Afraid not. Big cities are just not a place where freedom is going to blossom. But here in New Hampshire, it can. You want to check out Derek J's story and a great, real telling of some of the activism that went on here in Keene, New Hampshire, over about a year's period of time. Back in 2011, we turned it into a feature-length documentary film. You can go to victimlesscrimespree.com and you can watch the entire thing in its, uh, you know, the full film on YouTube. You can also grab it on DVD. The director's cut version of the film is available on DVD, and I highly recommend it. It's free, so go and check it out at victimlesscrimespree.com. Nathan is back with us, uh, calling from Texas on Skype. Nathan, are you there? I am. All right, so what was it that uh, you left us with a moment ago? So first on Shakespeare, uh, I'm definitely, I would say I'm not the best person to defend Shakespeare. I'm not a literature major or anything like that. I mean, I just read some of his plays and really enjoyed them. And I mean, the guy, the guy really was brilliant. He's, and there's a reason he's called like, he's called the greatest uh, playwright in the English language. No objection, Uh, by the way, just no objection to anything you've said so far. Yeah, I mean, he's a good writer for yeah. sure. I mean, as far as the plot of the stories, I mean, they're entertaining, and there's a reason why they've held for so long. And, but and it's been copied it's just, endlessly. It's just impossible to read it. I mean, if, you, if you're just and the I- average person, uh, <laughs> I, I tried reading some Shakespeare as an adult, and I had to have the dictionary tooltip installed, which is a neat little browser plugin where you can double click on words mm-hmm. and it comes up with the definition for them. I never would have gotten through that uh, through any of it if I couldn't like look up words literally every sentence. A lot of times I could infer sort of what the uh, the word meant based on the uh, the context in the in the okay. sentence, but. Man, it was difficult reading. It was like a slog reading through that. It was uh, horrifying. Well, we might have had different experiences because when I was in high school, we didn't do the, I I guess that what that caller was saying, you sit there and stand up and read a passage from Shakespeare. We read, you know, we had these textbooks that had annotations in the columns, like like you say, every few paragraphs to tell you what it's tell you what an unfamiliar word might mean. That's handy. And then we watched movies, uh, you know, about Shakespeare. And, you know, so we'd see a movie about Romeo and Juliet while reading the, uh, you know, we watched West Side Story, uh, for example. Ah, and, uh, indeed. Fantastic so, movie based off uh, Romeo and Juliet. So those really, uh, those kind of, that kind of style really helps, uh, helps to understand it, I think, as opposed to just, you know, standing up and reading passages like from the Bible or something. <laughs> Now, you had a question for Brett? Well, first Sorry. of all, I just want to say, Nathan, I'll tell you a secret. It might hurt my anti-Shakespeare cred a little bit, but I'm going to tell you okay. anyway. Okay. Last Shakespeare play I read was Julius Caesar, and I was either 33 or 34 years old at the time. So short, it was, wasn't that long ago, and I enjoyed it, and the secret was I did it voluntarily, mm. uh, which is uh-huh. a, a magic world of difference than being forced to do something. So is Shakespeare great? Is most of his work great? Is it really important uh, literary uh, contributions to the to the Western world and beyond? No doubt. I don't even think that's debatable. Um, but when you force people to do it, you know, that can take the joy out of anything. Well, I guess that leads into my next question, which is about what you think children should or shouldn't learn uh, in, a, in a free system uh, versus the current coercive system, because I have to admit, I feel a little troubled sometimes by some of the things I've heard you and Ian say. Like, I mean, I understand algebra is not something everyone needs to learn, for example, but, sure. um, you know, some people need to learn it. If you're going to be a chemist or a physicist, you need to learn it. And I just get a vibe sometimes from you, and I guess not from any one particular person, but from libertarians in general, I kind of get this vibe of, oh, well, all that fancy, uh, you know, math and science and literature, you know, we don't <laughs> need that. Fancy math and science. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I get what you mean. I, I certainly understand that. Uh, one of my biggest criticisms of school is that people are not taught how to learn. They're, how to spo- they're taught how to sponge up information. 
Uh, and which, then promptly forget it later. Yeah, yeah, and then they jettison that information when they don't need it for tests anymore. And I have asked, you know, I used to do these SAT classes that were as big as 40 kids sometimes, and I would always ask the same question, how do you learn vocabulary? They would all tell me the same thing. They would get a list of unrelated words mm -hmm. at the beginning of the week. They would cram for a quiz on Friday, and then they would forget all what all the words meant. And they, they, you see these people in these SAT classes when you're preparing for you know the um, verbal portion of the test, and they're all writhing like, oh, I've heard that word before, but I forget it. It was a vocabulary <laughs> word once. Um, but they're not taught like Latin roots, you know? So they're not given mm -hmm. a foundation of education. You know, they're just force-fed information. Um, they basically are uh, compelled to sponge it up and then barf it onto a quiz and then just repeat. And that's well, not definitely. learning. That's that. So um, I try not to use the word should, right? When, when we're talking about, uh, you know, things being done in a voluntary way, I've tried I still use it all the time, but I am making an active effort to take the word should out of my vocabulary. But I believe that students benefit from learning critical thinking skills, like the trivium method, from learning the grammar of whatever language they speak. You know, like, what does bio mean? What does auto mean? What does D, in, ab, what do all those things mean? Because then you're able to figure out, you know, you see a word like uh, uh, intransigence, Right, but if you know what right, in does in a roots. word, you know what trans does in a word. You might be able to get a meaning just from knowing the parts of the word. But no one's taught language that way, so no one's taught how to learn, and no one's taught to be intellectually self-sufficient. We have to also, ironically, learn that on our own. So, <laughs> yeah. I I don't like the word should when it comes to. Uh, the education of young people, but there are things that I think are valuable that I try to, on my show, encourage people to either pursue for themselves or teach to their children. Well, uh, I guess let me, and I agree with what you said about the cramming. In fact, there's research out there that shows that cramming is one of the worst ways to learn something because it, you only recall it for a short time. But uh, I wanted to, I guess maybe I could rephrase the question. In a, in a free society, what, what do you think most parents would want their children to learn? Do you think they would you know, demand advanced organic chemistry of 10-year-olds? I mean, how, how, does that, how do you think that would go? I think it would be every set of parents would have a different set of standards. I mean, it yeah. would be the market would be responding to those demands and what parents thought was important. The, it's hard to really say what most parents would want because everyone's different, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a very gradual transition too, Nathan, because remember, a lot of these parents are pretty schooled, right? And they, they just, mm -hmm. they kind of unquestioningly... Reading, writing, and arithmetic. Right, it's not because it's not they're <laughs> dumb people, but, you know, it's, it's almost always for me a, a, a problem that stems from the number one lesson of government school, which is obedience. Number mm -hmm. two is conformity. Number three is apathy, if you want to know all three. But oh. people just, they say, oh, you're the expert? Oh, my goodness, look at you. You're on TV. I should, I should, you wrote an article for the newspaper? My goodness, who am I to, you know, disagree? And, and that's obviously like an internal dialogue a lot of the time, but people put too much faith in authority. And a lot of times people get into those positions of authority, whether we're talking about local school board or the highest, you know, uh, seats in academia or in government because they want to control other people. So true. Nathan, thanks for the call tonight. Let's go to Dave in Nevada on the amp lines. Hello, Dave. Hey, guys. Uh, great show today, by the way. Go ahead, sir. Um, keeping with the whole uh, school theme, I, I, meant, I, I heard earlier somebody mentioned Common Core, and I think as bad as, you know, schools are, that with Common Core, it makes it even worse because basically you have the federalization of, of school standards now, and they say, oh, well, the states, you know, put it together, put the standards together and adopted it, but basically they blackmail the states into doing it and say uh, through that stimulus package, yeah, if you guys adopt these standards, we're going to give you all this money. Well, it's, um, uh, you know, blackmail Blackmail is a strong word, uh, and just the, the what, what I usually say is, they say, hey, you want some money? States, the federal government does this, and we've seen mm -hmm. them do this in law enforcement, right? They oh, get sure. people to have these DWI programs by promising local police departments all this cool tech. So the federal Department of Education says to the State Department of Education, hey, you guys looking for more money? Well, government's yes. always looking for more money. So then 
they uh, say, well, there's some strings attached, and the strings always turn out to be these chains that you're talking about. I've heard that uh, the federal government provides 6% on average of any government school's operating budget, but also controls Almost like all 90%. The control. Hey, thanks for the call, Dave. We're out of time for tonight. Check more Brett out over at SchoolSucksProject.com and more Free Talk Live tomorrow night. FreeTalkLive.com in the meantime. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN. Dot FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Wednesday, March 12th, 2014. Here's the news. Radio VR News. Republican David Jolly is the winner of a special election for Congress in Central Florida. Some are saying this might be a test of the upcoming midterm congressional elections. Ed Donahue has the details. This was an early test of President Obama's health care overhaul leading up to the midterm elections in November. Jolly didn't mention the issue directly in his victory speech. This race is not about defending a broken agenda in Washington or advancing a broken agenda in Washington. This race is about representing Pinellas County. He also spoke about dispensing with the rancor and vitriol of the last five months. I will always look to empower individuals and families before I will look to empower government. 